Bang! What's popping, people? We're back again for another episode of Parlay Madness. This time, we're doing no number 12. Episode number 12. We've got Curtis versus Allen. Brendan Allen, Chris Curtis. That's a rematch in the main event. And I ain't gonna lie to you. I weren't really feeling to do this podcast today. I didn't have some great sleep last night. I was up discussing big business, didn't go to sleep till very late, then my sleep wasn't great, been feeling a little bit fucked up today, you know, the boy's getting on a little bit now, the boy's getting old, I can't bounce back from a night, like, straight away, so I got my coffee, <clears throat> and I said to myself, you know, like, I gotta do the stream for the people, we ain't missed a Parlay Madness stream since I started, and I didn't want to make this week being the one that we missed, so, I'm here, we're here, my guy JB is here, and I'm going to bring him in right now. What's going on, brother? You're on mute, brother. Grand entrance. Well, grand entrance is done. It ain't there. I'm here. You're here. That's all that matters. Um, yeah, somebody, uh, you know, we got to talk about the life of lucrative MMA and JB, right? So this is part of the podcast every week, you know. I don't like to take too much into it, but I enjoy it just a little bit. Um, yeah, people out there saying I'm faking bet slips, so I got a challenge for anybody. Call out the exact bet slip that you believe that I faked. We'll have Dave Mason. We'll tag Dave Mason in the post. We'll have him independently verify it, and we'll bet any amount of money you want. So anybody thinking the Jewish betters faking bet slips, call me out on it. Tell me the exact bet slip. And we'll see if we can independently verify it. I'll put any amount of money on it. Put your money where your fucking mouth is. Yeah, I mean, he ain't faking bet slips. But I don't know if you boys remember, like, back in the day yeah, when I first came on Twitter, everyone used to say, where's your slips? You know, you're faking it. And they didn't do it straight away. But, you know, after like a year or two, they're like, yo, where's your slips? So then I started posting betting slips, right? And then everyone said, oh, the betting slips are faked. And I'm like, all right, you wanted me to post betting slips. Then when I post betting slips, you say they're fake. And then, then they say, oh, well, you're posting betting slips. You're faking betting slips. Apparently, I'm faking the cars I have. Apparently, I'm faking everything. So, you know, man, you can't win, JB. Even if you produce a slip, they're going to say that you faked the slip. You photoshopped it. So. It is what it is. My man ain't out here faking slips. I can confirm that. I know what you're betting. But we'll get straight into it. JB, you might have to like take the podcast a little bit today. As you can see, I'm a little bit, a little bit tired. Ain't really feeling the pod too much. So I'm gonna let you be the light of the podcast. And I'm just gonna kick back and run through my um, reads a little bit quicker this week. So you ready, boys? And like, like, like Remdog saying, the whole show is AI, you know? The whole show is AI. Nothing's real. I'm faking the background. I'm faking the coffee. I got the fake rain outside. I got the fake Aston Martin. Like, it's all fake right now, you know? JB's got his fake sprinklers. That wasn't sprinklers. The bricks like, are fake for sure, man. These aren't real. Nah, it's all fake, boys. You know what I'm saying? So let's do some fake breakdowns man because i think i'm gonna make some fake money this week as i always do right i lost some fake money last week and unfortunately i'm coming off my biggest losing fake week ever so last week i faked a 18 unit loss you know like just to just to make everyone think that i'm not winning every week you know i gotta like i gotta come across as an actual human so i faked the big loss last week unfortunately we're coming off a big fake loss so Hopefully, we can bounce back this week. You know, it's been an amazing year, but last week wasn't great. So, I want to continue this fake amazing year. And, bro, we got a good fake fight to start the the um, the preliminary card. We got Melissa Mullin, Mullins versus Nora Cornell. And, you know, when I say there's a good fight, definitely not a great fight. Um, this is a fake good fight. Pretty shit fight. But I'll go into the breakdown straight away. And I'll bring my screen so everyone can see what I'm talking about. But I'll go into the breakdown straight away, and it's a fairly easy breakdown for me because I just feel like Melissa Mullins is a bit of a level above Nora Cornell or Nora Cornelli, whatever you want to call her. Um, I think Melissa Mullins got some decent fake takedowns, and I think she's going to be able to fake some takedowns and you know get some fake top time. And 
I just feel like she's going to be winning the fight in the fake judge's eyes, to be honest. What's Nora Connolly going to do? You know, she might land some fake shots on the feet, but I don't really think it's going to affect Mullins too much. I mean, I've seen Mullins wobbled before, seen Mullins hurt. Nora Connolly, bit of an animal, bit of a fake dog. But Mullins has big grappling upside here. Definitely going to shoot takedowns here. Like, we know that for a fact. I doubt it's going to be a 15-minute striking fight. Even if it is, Mullins still has outs to win. I think she's going to fake take her down and kind of half dominate on the feet. So, yeah, man, I'll go with uh, Melissa fake Mullins to get the win. And um, probably by decision. She could get a fake finish, but I think it's going to be a decision overall. What do you think, brother? Yeah, she's she's pretty vicious with the ground and pound, though. And I know this girl, Cornell, likes to give up her back. Jocelyn Edwards had her a few times there. And I know we haven't seen much of the Mullen submission. But, yeah, I like the fake submission. I think she gets the grappling going. <laughs> probably gets the fake submission. Um, probably also by fake rear naked choke. Um, uh, but, but. I'm not going to, you know, go back and forth about the props crazy. We, we have the same read on the fight. Uh, we could even go on to the next one because, like, I just think she takes her down. That's her path to victory, and her striking isn't that bad. I don't think Cornell knocks her out. So give me Mullins to win the fight. Yeah, I feel you, man. And um, my man Dixon Sider is saying I missed all the, the good fake comments. I'm sorry, bro. Like, I'm not fully on the ball today, but I'm I'm livening up as the show goes on. So we're six minutes in and I'm feeling a little bit more energized. So don't worry, man. Um, one of the most important comments on the whole stream, actually, I saw you post earlier. And like I say every week, we get like a lot more comments every week. So it's fucking tough to keep up with, man. But we might have to get a producer here. Where's the OnlyFans fade comment? Because I saw it. Here we go. All right, boys, we need to speak about the fake OnlyFans fade, right? So... Dixon Sider is saying, James, please don't forget this week's only fans fake fade are Norma Dumont, Charlie Campbell, and Chepe Mariscal. So if you don't know, these three motherfuckers have um, only fans. And apparently, if you bet against the fighters who have only fans, you cash big money. So that's what Dixon Sider is saying. I can't fully get behind it yet. I need to do my research. You know, like I do remember the last, one of the biggest max bets I've ever had. She did have a uh, fake OnlyFans, Aileen Perez, and she won via fake 3025 decision. So, you know, I guess she was a little bit of an outlier. But to be honest, some of these OnlyFans guys have been losing. Like last week, I think Dixon Siders called like Bill Algio. And there was a couple of other guys with OnlyFans who ended up losing as well. Maybe, I don't think it was Loopy, but someone else. But yeah, I, I have to mention Dixon Sider because, you know, he's the man. Um, so yeah, I think we both agree on that one, bro. What I'll do is I'll write down our... Uh, Leans, as always. So, boys, if you don't know how the show works, we'll go through every single fight on the card, break down every single fight on the card, and then write down any plus EV le legs we see on the card. So, um, is there anything specific you want to see? You said you didn't really care about props, personally, or anything you I see? I would be cool. Yeah, let's look at it, just so we could scroll through. But I'm, I, I would also just be cool with uh, Cornell Moneyline. Let's look, though. I'm going to flip my camera real quick. Yeah, so, I mean, so I just like Dixon. I like Dixon decision. Um, Dixon, Dixon Sider? Yeah, yeah, Ooh. I like I like that. I think that she could get a finish, but I also believe that she could get a... Um, decision win. I, I lean decision because I think Cornoli's tough, um, but I wouldn't, you know, it's definitely not impossible. Can't tough out a choke, my man, you know? True. And that's that's my uh, thought process behind it. So let's just leave um, Cornell money line. All right. So you like all right. Well, I'll put Dixon for me. I mean, not Cornell. My fault. My fault, brother. I just said Cornell because I'm. Oh, okay. So you don't God. like you don't like Cornell yet? Plus Dixon. no, no, no. I, I, I would say Dixon money line right. as well. Um, do I? I'm gonna write Dixon decision just because who knows? I might want to fuck around with it. Fair enough. And then that's about it. Um, she could get a ground and pound. Me personally, I don't want to put it down. So if you don't. Yeah. I think with these ones, you know, anything you want to put down, let me know. I'll write down. Anything I want to put down, I'll, I'll write down. And then at Perfect. the end, when we're making our parlays, you know, we can just. Because sometimes, like, we don't have to join Tuesdays. If you, if you like 
sub, but I like decision. You can still write sub because you've got your own, you've got your own parlays to make, you know. Yeah, this kind of reminds me of the locker room fight last week, man. Not even gonna lie to you. Oh man, that was bullshit, bro. Like that was like bullshit. she could get the finish, or it just could go like you know the distance. That was a legit read from us, man. But, yeah, I, mean, I agree. I mean, I still okay. cashed off from money line, but yeah. we got next here: Budka versus Caesar Almeida, guys. Can you uh, take this is a good away? fight? I've got, I've got a uh, bet on LFA going on right now, and I wanna I wanna check the status of it. Okay, perfect. Yeah, Budka. This, I think this is a pretty uh, cut and dry fight. I think Budka is gonna look to grapple here. I think Almeida is going to look to defend the grappling, stay on top, stay away from the grappling, actually. Because I think if he engages in the clinch at all with Budka here, it would be, um, you know, detrimental to him. I think the second he gets the breakaway, he's got to do so. Um, I'm not going to go too long on this one. I actually like the fight that goes to the decision. Both these guys are fairly durable. Uh, Almeida does have KO power, but he's not really like a KO guy as much as people are thinking of him as, I think. Budka is very tough. He's got actually good striking, good defensive work on the striking. I don't think it's bad. And he uses it to get to his takedowns and his clinch. The thing is, I just don't think he's the best BJJ guy. Like, once he gets to the, the ground, I don't think he has the best, like, top control of subs. But yeah. I think he'll be able to control Almeida on the fence in certain points in this fight. Um, and I slightly lean Almeida just off of the damage and uh, the damaging shots. So I, I'm going to go with Almeida. Almeida by decision here. I think he's able to get away from the grappling, and it, then it's just dependent on how the uh, judges score it. Because I think Al, um, Budka will have grappling success, but I don't know if he does enough damage in those situations or enough, um, you know, gets enough submission offense off uh, for the control time to matter uh, compared to the shots that Almeida lands. Yeah, makes sense. I like um, Budka here. I think that he's got decent upside to win. I think he's got the grappling upside. I think he'll be able to take Almeida down. I was on Almeida in his last fight on the Contender Series at plus 200 against um, that Fernando guy. And he 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 fought well in that fight. Um, I actually didn't think he was going to win, but I thought he was worth a shot based on the unknowns, based on him being a very high-level glory kickboxer back in the day, um, and even fairly recently. He was a big uh, underdog in that fight, right? In plus that, 200, I got, yeah. Yeah, yeah so... You know, I, I took the shot on him based on the unknowns because of that. But, you know, at a close to a pick em line where it was at one point, you got to favor the wrestler. He's more proven in MMA. He's been training MMA for a lot longer. And, I mean, Almeida is quite a low-volume guy on the feet, to be honest, even if it is on the feet. I don't think he's going to be pulling away massively. He'll, he'll be landing some strikes and the better strikes, and he obviously has a chance to knock him out. But I just feel like like I, I feel like this is going to be a case where, where the grappling will outdo the striking. Because I don't think the striking is going to be what it needs to be. I don't think it's going to cause enough damage. Now, obviously, Cesar Almeida is an elite striker. He can land a knockout here. He can land a knockdown. I just think more often than not, the low-volume nature of Almeida is going to make it so that Dylan Booker can get his grappling game going and that the judges just value that a little bit more if it goes to decision. I also think that Cesar Almeida being a um, seasoned striker, being a striker for his entire life, and now coming over to MMA as an old guy. I mean, if we scroll down here, you can see his age is 36 years of age, man. So this is a 12-year age difference, which is massive, massive, massive in MMA already. And not only is it a 12-year age difference, but it's also a 12-year age difference in where Cesar Almeida is a striker. So it's a big age difference, but this guy hasn't been training grappling for long at all. And he's definitely not been training grappling to a high degree. So I think that if he gets taken down and put in one bad position, Booker can le legitimately just find the finish. So I feel like round two and round three, I think Booker can find the finish here. And, um, you know, it's not so much that Booker is a, is, is a big finisher on the ground because I don't actually think he is. But it's one of those ones where we've got Alex Pereira on the ground. Do you know what I mean? Like this guy is an out-and-out -out kickboxer, man. So I think it, it, like he's a white belt. You know, Cesar Almeida is a white belt. I will say I was pretty impressed with his last fight, man. Yeah, like, it was all right. But that guy's a striker as well. You know, like, yeah, he reversed a couple of positions, but that was against a striker. Booker yeah. is not a striker. You know, he's a grappler by nature. And I just feel like the level difference is going to be quite big uh, on the ground. I personally believe that. We'll, we'll see it come to fruition um, this weekend. But I, I, I wouldn't put out the wrong possibility that Booker finds a finish. Um, so, yeah. I think Booker's the side. I think Booker finishes all right, but I, I don't mind the goes to decision. Like, what what's the odds? Um, 
for yeah. him. Yeah, I think Budka looks like my cousin, bro. This guy got a basically me with a bald head and a man bun, bro. Am yeah, I bro. lying? Mm, don't know, chat. What do you think, bro? Why isn't it zooming in, man? Budka, come on. <laughs> I gotta like make the same face. <laughs> I can't work this shit out, bro. I can't even make it up, man. But um, I I don't mind it, man. I I don't want to go too crazy because I don't have a play on this fight whatsoever. So <laughs> I can see it a little. That's my guy gone. There you are. Yeah, his haircut is crazy, man. Yeah, that's a <laughs> mad thing still. Oh man, dude. So you think he gets the finish? I just think that this guy's a striker for his entire life and he's definitely yeah. going to be finished on the ground at some point. I mean, it's weird. I always say, like, grappling is more dangerous it's, than striking. Like, it's harder the, to learn, too, for fucking sure. Yes, definitely. That, that's a fact. I know and that. And I said that last week. I can't remember what fight I was talking about, but I think... In, I mean, it sounds like it would be a get for the main event, Aaron v, v, v Faro, but I don't think it was. But yeah, like the like if you've been training grappling a year, you're just going to get run through by a black belt. But if you've been training striking for a year, you will get run through by a black belt striker. But like you could potentially yeah. last a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Whereas if you get taken down once within 30 seconds, you're getting subbed if you're a white belt against the black belt. So it's not the same with striking. And I just feel like when these strikers come over from MMA, man, like I just. I mean, sorry, from kickboxing and stuff. Like, if their takedown defense ain't great, then I just feel like they'll get run through on the ground. I'm not saying it's definitely. Um, oh, man, what's saying? Grace Band saying the early stoppage. Mm. Oh, well, happens. So we went one and one for LFA, but one guy who won was a favorite. So that means we would have lost about a unit or so tonight, uh, is what it is. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I, I was going to say. Like, I think if he could settle um, Almeida to his back, he'll have a lot of success. But if Almeida's able to build the base and keep wrestling back up, it's going to be a problem. But Budka's a good wrestler, man. What I have a problem with is is just jujitsu overall game. Uh, I feel like he winds up doing things in scrambles, falling off a of position, and I just haven't seen enough of it in the film of what just what I saw. Yeah, fair but that's my only worry. All right. Well, I'm gonna write Budka for me minus one fifty. Um, I don't know about any props, to be honest. Let me I'm see. I'm cool what... with that. Or finish for Budka? What's the number? Oh, I'll plus 225. I would see, like, ground and pound, honestly. That's the funny part, as you probably think it would be a sub, right? But I actually would think, if anything, it would be the ground and pound. You yeah. Get into a dominant position punch. But I think I'll just leave it personally. Did you want to yeah. play GPD? No, nah, I'm good with that. Okay. I don't have any bets on this fight, man, so. You you're you're more confident it seems than uh, I am. Yeah, I like Booker. All right, next fight: Matsumoto versus <laughs> Agueta. Um, yeah, good fight. Can you take this one away? I don't have a great read on it, but yeah, I think Argueta has some grappling upside. I think um, he's got to be careful not falling off for certain positions. Matsumoto's got some good striking, but he doesn't have the UFC experience. He hasn't fought in the same competition as well. Um, I don't really have a great read on this fight, man. I'll be honest with you. I think I think Argetta could get some dominant positions on the mat. I think he could look like a, a good favorite. But I actually just think this fight's a pick -em. So I'm going to go with the uh, slight underdog in Argetta. Um, just, just based off the experience factor, I don't think he really fades as much as people really make it out the seam. And I think Matsumoto hasn't really proven anything to me. Yeah, he's an undefeated fighter, but... I think that's being factored in the price because we just really haven't seen enough of it at the higher levels. Um, yeah. I like his striking, though. I will say that Matsumoto's clean. He's got clean hands. He's got nice head kicks. Uh, saw him with a few knockouts uh, in his pre, uh, just his regional tape. So I don't mind him. I uh, really don't have a really big lean on this fight. Just I have leans on this card, not on this fight. Uh, I'll go with Argetta, bro. Just, just that of a win. Same, man. Um, I don't really have a great read on the fight. I understand, you know, people playing our getter here. Obviously, he's going to shoot takedowns. We've seen the Massimo taken down. 
it's not a very hard fight to break down, but I don't think it's a very easy fight to have it to have a great read on, to be honest. So I'm going to I'm going to pick Matsumoto. I'm going to say that he wins via damage. I think in round two or round three, he starts to stuff some takedowns a little bit more. I think Agueta could potentially slow down a little bit. Um, and obviously, you know, he's got good cardio, but I think Matsumoto can match the cardio, to be honest. And, um, you know, it's always more tiring offensively res wrestling than defensively wrestling. So I think that may play into the fight as we go into round two or round three. Also, Matsumoto is going to be landing the better strikes. He's the better striker here. He also sh uh, strikes to all levels, which I like. You know, I like to see a fighter who goes to the legs, who goes to the body, who goes to the head. Um, so, yeah, I'll pick Matsumoto via close decision. Um, but I don't hate anyone taking a shot on Agueta, to be honest. Um, but, yeah, I think Matsumoto gets the one. This, yeah, this I don't one. have a single bet on that fight, man. Like, honest to God. So, uh, okay. Um, a lot more better fights for me coming up. I'm going to write Matsumoto down. Um, okay. Dude, that guy's got a sick last name in all series. It's Matsumoto? Yeah, that it sounds like, like Maximilian. Fucking... Yeah. Bro, it gives me um, like Japanese samurai vibes. Yes, bro. Matsumoto. Matsumoto. Matsumoto-san. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard a British guy talking an Asian accent. I'm kind of... I didn't <laughs> think it was possible. <laughs> Who's the guy who does Book of Five Rings? Um, book Similar name, rings. I swear. The Book of Five Rings. You know about that book, boys? No, no. The Book of... Oh, yeah, Miyamoto Musashi. Oh, okay. That's hilarious. John Masamoto. You know, Masamoto. Similar. Yeah, sick name. Uh, he's going to win on name alone, I think. Just off name, yeah. Yeah, they, they, it's going to be a close fight, you know, grappling versus damage, and then the judges are going to be like, Dan Argueta or John Masamoto. Like, let's give it to Masamoto, man. So Masamoto decision plus one twenty-five. I don't mind it. I'm gonna write I it like down. It. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna write it down just because why not? Isn't it? Because I kidding. think that breakdown was accurate, man. Matsumoto by split decision, even maybe. Yeah, that's What's that number. One. Does it have it on fight odds? I don't because I'd never bet it myself. I bro. never see it on fight odds, but it would be on bet online, um, and I totally could see it. Market yeah. fans just sick to their stomach. We won that fight. Yeah, like a Bulgarian sea rod fight. That was hilarious. Yes, yes, bro. The fucking salty uh, Argetta tears. <laughs> that fight. We were smoking on that uh, Bulgarian pack for a while, bro. But you got it's run out now. It's run out. We had a couple of losses. It's run out. We need a new pack, bro. I think we're getting that uh, Argetta pack this week on the judges' scorecard, my guy. Well, uh, yeah, I guess maybe. we could look it up or uh, chat. Can we go on Bet Online? Can we get a verified number on the split decision, please? Yeah, can can we verify that, bro? Thank you. I do have a good read on the next fight, Kevin. You know, bro. Like, I'm 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 global, man. I'm global. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm in New Zealand, right? But I'm from London. But I'm going to do a live podcast with my man in America. Yes, you know what I'm, saying? I'm trained Brazilian jiu jitsu. And I'm about to be in Thailand to train Thai boxing. I mean, I'm I'm global, bro. And the Book of Five Rings is from uh, Miyamoto Musashi, who's another person that is a yeah. I'm global, bro. I know I know about it all. Yeah. Magomed Sharaputin, long lost inbred American brother. Come on, bro. <laughs> I don't was be, gonna <laughs> be coming with like That's that. That's hilarious. Bro. I don't even care. He uh, threw me off. No, he got a laugh. He <laughs> threw me off because he said Magomed Sharapudin. So I was like, oh, yeah, sweet. He's just talking about fighting. <laughs> uh, Pitbull the rapper. Bang, Dude, bang. Dixon, bang, you need bang. a new profile picture, bro. That one throws Who? me off every time. Dixon, Dixon side. Yeah, got Paul Shaughnessy there, right? <laughs> it's just like the worst picture of him, too. The I most know, unflattering. Bro, where, where is that from? Where is that from, Dixon? Like, why did he make that face? What is this? <laughs> it's got to be like an inside joke. That was when he bet on um, Isaac Dolgarian, bro. When the judges read <laughs> out the scorecards. I'm it looks like, I <laughs> it looks like Weidman last week, bro. Yeah, he does. Silver. That's funny. Uh, did we get this line? Did we get this split for? Um... Yeah, anyone talking about the split? Matsumoto by split six hundred. Yeah, so the wow. bookies are kind of on it, eh? Yeah, it kind of sucks. 
My man's asking me, uh, bro, why are you asking me this on the podcast? Can you start posting what would be the lines to on the tennis chat when actually market switches if we should place it and to what amount? All right, bro, just just message me through the site or something. I, I can't answer that right now. But if anyone wants to join the um, join my tennis group. We disgustingly crushed the market. Jesus, I got the best tennis group in the world, JB. You know, like you need Rackets, to start I gotta get in there, bro. You gotta you need to start jumping on tennis. Bro, I need dude. to remind. I need to remind myself. I, I don't know why I'm sleeping. We killing it, um, bro. Did you tape this fight? Because I didn't tape this fight, man. I was gonna skip it. If, please, you, please, bro. I love this, um, dude. Victor Hugo, nickname Striker, not coming in on short notice here. I think he's the yeah. way more dynamic striker. I think he's going to have the threat of the jiu-jitsu on the mat. Yeah, Falco is the better grappler. I was thinking maybe I could take a Falco submission prop, but I don't think he's that much better. I think Hugo has the nasty submissions. And the thing that I like about Hugo that I will talk about, because I love the leg locks in modern MMA. Like, I love the K-guard. I love these positions where you off-center your uh, head and enter the legs. And mm. not saying he's, like, the most dynamic uh, BJJ guy. But the thing that I do like that he does with these heel hooks is he always winds up in a better position. And people say, oh, the heel hook, oh, the guillotine, these are bad moves. They're not bad moves when if you don't end up in a worse position. If you are aware that the, the heel hook is going sour and you use it to wrestle up and get on top, well, did you really lose in that exchange? No, not whatsoever. So what was the risk for going for the heel hook? It's if it's a high risk reward move. So I actually think Hugo is going to have the defensive chops to get the grappling, um, you know, a Falco nullified. And it's going to be a striking matchup where he's way more dynamic, way more powerful. I like Victor Hugo to get the knockout here. Don't really see that many people predicting it on Tapology, on anywhere. Um, I think Hugo Silva wins this fight, man. And I think he even could find a finish via KO. Is he only minus one thirty? Is that a, is that a legit price? I thought he was. I don't think that's legit because Falco no. looks like he's got a pound sign and a weird little A in his name. What the heck is that? Oh yeah, Jesus Christ, man. Okay, so I guess we're gonna need the chat again. Uh, what are we getting, Victor Hugo by KO? Yeah, I mean, are the lines out for the KO and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I thought I, I bet it. I don't know what it's at now. I got plus oh, five seventy five. Oh, Hugo's only minus 134, so it's about right. About so right. I guess you want Hugo. Yeah, I like Hugo here in the spot. I think his striking is going to be enough to get – he's not the guy coming in on short notice. I'll take this one. I'll take this one after. Hugo KO is 500. You you want me to write that down? Yeah, I like it. That's my read on the fight. I think he gets the knockout here. Um, okay, Hugo inside the distance, I'll just tell you um, – 180 major difference. So you like the KO, I'm assuming. I like the KO better. I don't think he subs. Falco is a good BJJ practitioner. Um, so that doesn't really make sense to me. If anything, I think it would be a KO. Just because he got a submission in his last fight, his submission line? No, that, that, I don't like that. Uh, I think there's a reason his nickname is Striker. This guy's a striker, guys, at heart. I think Musashi. he hits nasty kicks. And Musashi coming like Fernando Rodney, beating 61 men. In hand to hand combat. The Musashi. Fernando just came photo? into the chat once and then dipped. Like, brother, where are you at, man? Oh, I thought you meant he was back right now. Damn. Nah, nah, I'm saying, like, he's like Musashi beating 61 men in one on one combat. Shout out to Fernando Rodney. And shout out to the 570 live viewers we got. Sheesh. Lethal Sugar wants to know about the tennis group. That's I mean, a sick pick. I can't, I mean, what do you want to know? Like, the profit is about 38 units with a 17% ROI since the start of the year. And that's when we started the group. Mm. If you want to join the group, you can. But the thing is, there's no downswings in this group at all. It's basically just like winning bet after winning bet. Obviously, we lose, you know, every now and then. But just consistent wins, which is very good for the mental aspect of the game. There if you want is. to join, just go to this website right now. You can join. I definitely recommend everyone joining the tennis group. It's, it's a lot cheaper than the um, MMA group. And, yeah, it's pretty solid just as lucrative uh, yeah man for real it's a high roi so yeah chat everyone hit the like i never ever say that but hit the like button it's going to make the show grow if the show grows i'm more motivated to do more shows it's very simple boys hit the like button if you're here now this i just need you i just need like. you awake next week bro for ufc 300 that's all worry, man. You, next, right, jb next week i might I might go insane, you know. I might. 
boys, next week I might release some huge bets, you know. Like, I might... You know I had one max bet this year, Peyton Talbot versus Cameron Simon, the easiest money I've ever made in my entire life. Quick quick 55K or something, not something like, quick 55K in the bank. Quick yearly salary in the bank from five minutes and 16 seconds of Peyton Talbot beating the fuck out of... He murked him, bro. That was a, that was a crazy fight, bro. Like, he made him look like a little child. It was... It was quite insane to see, even though I knew he'd beat him. I didn't think it would be that good. So I might have to come back with some big bets, man. So I've already had Peyton Talbot this year. It's the only one. I might have to have a couple of max bets on this card, JB. I think next week's going to be insanity. You know, I think it really is. Sheesh. Yeah, man. Let's I might go. Have, I might have a couple of like, I think it's going to be another $100,000 day profit easily, to be honest. Just like Dixon is saying, you know. The wet dream. Fuck these wet wipes. About to have a wet dream. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. All right. What else we got going on? Um, bro, this guy looks exactly like someone. Pedro Falcao. Who does... It's not Alex Perez. RDA. It's RDA. No, <laughs> he does look a bit like him. He looks like Alex Pereira a bit, you know. A little bit. A little bit. It's, there's someone who looks exactly like that. I don't know. Yeah, um, all right, what? Well, I'll just let you write that down because, as I said, okay. I ain't taped it. I will tape it after, though, because the line... Let me know what like... you think, please. DM me or something. Yeah, I will. Norma Dumont, Jermaine Durandamy. I think Durandamy is going to win the fight. Um, she's got she's got huge um, intangible negatives coming into this fight. And you know how big I am on intangibles, boys. So I understand, you know... Not wanting to play her. She's 39. She's 40 years old. Let's just call a spade a spade. She's 40 in... Uh, JB, I think she's 40 in t two weeks after, after that's, the fight. That's old. 40, two weeks after the fight. It's an old motherfucker. But at the end of the day, she's the much better striker. Uh, Norma Dumont doesn't really have much takedown in her game. I don't see her taking down that many girls. Oftentimes, she doesn't even shoot in her fights when I feel like they may be a smart decision to do that. Jermaine Durandamy hits harder. She hits cleaner. She hits faster. She's the better striker. Even in the clinch, she's going to have some upside with the knees. Um, Dumont's, mm, Dumont always fights close, JB. Dumont don't really run away with any fight. You know, I don't really see Dumont as the favorite in this one. You know, if it was... Um, if Jermaine Durand and me didn't have a baby and all of that stuff, I'd probably, um, I, I, I might, maybe not max better, but probably put a lot of money on her. But yeah, man, I think Jermaine Durand and me is going to win the fight via striking. It is what it is. Uh, what do you think, JB? Yeah, I was about to read on the fight originally, but I just think she's a little bit of a public underdog, and I can't get with it, bro. That's part of my strategy is just looking at what people are betting. And when I see too many people on one side, bro, I got to open my eyes. I haven't seen right, but, let, but let me ask you a question. Yeah. Because like, because I want to know. And, and you know, mm -hmm. I want to I wanna, I wanna ask now before yes, I sir. forget. So I bet Jermaine Durand to me, plus 150. I think I got like Kevin Temet, Thomas. I think I sent it out at like plus 140 or something. That's a good bet. Um, so I did this on Monday or something. It was a while back, right? I bet Jermaine Durand to me quite early, uh, at least three, four days ago. And then you are right. A lot of people are on Jermaine Durand me, but that's all after I bet it, right? So like I bet it, and then you hear all these podcasts talking about it. You hear all these um, Twitter users talking about it. So how am I meant to feel about that? Like, should I now be worried? And I'm just asking you personally. Obviously, I have my own opinion, but you don't like public dogs, and I completely understand that. Um, so now I'm asking you, if I already bet it, and then it becomes a public dog, do I have to think... Maybe it became a public dog because people are following me, or did it be. become a public dog just because people just like her? Should I, I be worried? Should I not be worried? I'm just wondered your opinion. I think people just like her, bro, because I think they see exactly what you're seeing. She's the much cleaner striker. She's the much better. Uh, you know, Norma Dumont's not really the best grappler. Uh, you know, she doesn't really finish fights, even though she does have power. I've seen her rock multiple girls with that right hand, um, and then immediately clinch after. Uh, her IQ is not the best. At the end of the day, like sometimes you just gotta re remember, like forty years old isn't the best, um, you know, best thing for MMA. Four years off isn't the best thing for MMA, and those are things that I would be worried about. At that, it's stuff that you can't ignore. 
But I think that's why plus 150, though, was a good price on Jermaine Duran and me. Yeah. Plus 105, now we're starting to get a little bit close on a yeah. public underdog, and that's why I don't like it. So I'll just say Dumont. Dumont probably gets a decision. But I could see her even rocking Duran and me um, and probably clenching her right after. Uh, I could also see a world where Duran and me knocks her out, right? She comes back the exact version of what we remembered her. Um, yeah. You know, the one that beat Pena, submitted her. And gets another finish here via via most likely KO. You know, Dumont been KO'd before by Megan Anderson, so it ain't far fetched to think that Jermaine Durand and me could could knock her out. Um, and I'll let you respond to that in a second. But I did take a stab on the fight ends by KO here. I think Dumont could rock her with the right hand. I know people are saying it's a little crazy, but I think Durand and me could also finish her. I, I like violence here. That's basically what I'm saying. I uh, I think this fight could end in an under. And I think a lot of people are expecting a woman's fight just go over pretty easy. But I think there's going to be a lot of striking here. Maybe some yeah. clinching from Dumont, but I think Duran and me will get away. And it's back to just, I think it's going to be a banger, bro. I think these, both these gonna, women are going to bang it out. And yeah. we just don't know what version of Duran and me we're getting. Straight up. Bro, even if we're getting Duran and me at 20% less, um, I still think she wins the fight. So, you know. Right. What do you think about the inside the distance? Or just the... Uh. Tough call. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah. I mean, it definitely could happen. Obviously, like, obviously, I have to look at the odds now. Um, fuck, the lines move hugely. Jesus Christ! Wow, uh, it just as we was talking, well, it went from least... one hundred to minus one hundred five. G. Literally, well, did, did you see that? Who saw that? It literally just flopped. Did you see that, bro? It changed from plus one hundred. Oh my God, guys! Did you see that, bro? It literally just changed thirteen minutes ago. Yeah, 30. So when I clicked on there, bomb, it changed. Bro, um, we were thinking about it and they changed the line. We didn't even have to talk about it, bro. We were thinking about it. Yeah. And they actually changed the line. Let me just, just think uh, about address this. Pe people. Yeah, Go so. For it, bro. No, because a lot of people are talking about lines and if they move them and the market's too big and if I affect them or not. Um, yeah, I I've been causing line movement in MMA for the last five years. So line move. Obviously, I moved the lines in MMA. I mean, it's not, it's not, um, you know, it's public knowledge. The the reason I do is because I place big bets and the bookies respect what I place. And also because I have a service. So then the loads of people that I give out my picks to also go and bet on those lines and the lines move even further. So there's a double, there's a double, um, two ways that I'm affecting lines. So yeah, of course I affect the lines. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's a, it's a hard concept for people don't understand but once it once you start to figure it out it, it makes sense yeah i mean it's all it's all it's all common knowledge um yeah they don't always go in my way but most of the time they go but the reason they go most of the time is just because i'm on the right side it's not even me personally you know, right because if i'm a winning mma gambler so most of the time my bets will be the right side obviously not all the time but like most of the time they will be and so the lines are gonna move like if i was betting one dollar and i had no service the lines will still move to my way. I just wouldn't be causing it because I'm mm -hmm. usually in the, the correct side. Not all of the time, but, you know, over the long term. I didn't so what we got here? Time. Fight ends inside um, the distance. I like is... Jermaine Durand and me. I'm going to write it down for me personally. Yeah, that's fine. I, I'm not like you – know, I, I just – my basis of it, I think she's supposed to win the fight. She's just you don't bear a minus one to five, bro. You don't bear a minus one to five. Okay. No, but you know what I'm saying? Like, it's minus 105 now, right? Plus 150 is way bad. I, I, I think that's a good bet. Yeah. I mean, right. it is, clearly. The line, the market's respecting it. And that's what exactly. matters to me. Because everybody could be on it. But if then if the line doesn't move, that's when I start to really get worried, right? About to flip to a favorite, bro. We saw Eustace Villal. Everybody was on him. Flipped. Yeah. Still won. Exactly, bro. And, like, usually the line movement is correct. So... Uh, hopefully it's correct this week because obviously yeah. I did the um <laughs> hey, I just John Kenny. <laughs> Come out of here, bro. What do you think I am? Some monkey or something? <laughs> um go go and rewind. I'll do the bang thing for you. Just rewind, brother. He just said it. He um, just said it. Yeah, I just said it. Yeah, I'll do that. Do the raw. All right, what we going? Uh end the ITD plus one. Up. I I personally don't like it like okay. Let's, I just let's stay away. You know what it is? I think both girls are tough. It's not that I don't think mm. both girls are finishing upside. I just think both girls are tough. But it could definitely happen. Me personally, I won't be playing it. But um, I can write it down for you, of course. Not, me, 
Not right. really crazy about it. 375. What's the KO for? Uh, uh, the same I thing, just got right? just go for the ITD at that point. We saw I wrap up the neck last time out. Yeah, yeah. Let's just go with Durandamy. Leave that. I'm cool with it, bro. Let's move on All to right. the next fight so we don't sit here for seven hours. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Court McGee versus Alex Morona. I'm going to speak about this one quickly. I think Court sure. McGee is a little bit washed at this point. I still think Alex Morono is competing with the best. Um, and I think Alex Morono is going to win. I even think he could continue the recent Court McGee down streak with an inside the distance win, maybe by a front choke after rocking him club and sub, or maybe just by a straight knockout. I don't mind Morono inside the distance. I need to see the price. I need to see the odds. Um, if down to 2.5 is plus 215, I think that's pretty decent. Um, I think he's so, talking yeah. about uh, the Dumont. But. Yeah, okay, fair enough. I, I, I'm picking Morono. I haven't checked the props for this one at all, to be honest, boys. I'm picking Morono, um, and I'll say inside the distance. What about you? Yeah, that's like the read on the fight for me is the KO, but weird market. I think parlay buster range for uh, Alex Morono. I think Court yeah. McKee is pretty washed, though, but he could grind out a decision, bro. I've seen Alex Morono yep. fight with low IQ. His striking isn't the best. He plays off his back. I think McGee has takedown upside where, like, if he gets taken down, I think Morono will play off his back, bro. I actually do think that. Um, I've seen him do it before. That's my read on the fight. Just weird gut feeling that McGee could ruin a lot of people's parlays. And um, it, he would just have to show up with a chin. Like, that's it. If, if he shows up with a chin, 50-50 fight for me, bro. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. But I just don't. I, I don't trust it, dog. I see you getting knocked out by Matt Brown with a strike that I don't eat bone. <laughs> yeah. Didn't look like the biggest knockout strike to me. So, Morono KO, Morono KO. I could see it even late, like where it just doesn't happen until like the third round. It's like, yep, his chin was washed. Everybody live bets McGee. Everybody gets in because they're like, oh my God, this is happening. He's actually winning. And then Morono just puts him in the third round. Um, so that's my read on the fight. Not really confident. Not, not an Alex Morono believer, if you couldn't tell. Um, yeah. not, not that I don't think the guy's – he's a good fighter. Very good. I mean, the guy's got wins um, with his skill set. I think he's done very well in the UFC. Fucking classic veteran. Corey McGee's a tough guy. I could see him grinding out, you know, a weird, weird decision. So, yeah. Is there anything you want to write down in terms of odds or odd? Honestly, I don't really – cared for this fight i just looked at the odds of morano inside the distance is even money which is disgusting i don't and even they... want to touch this fight bro bro uh, inside I... the distance is even money bro what the fuck morano to win itd is one minus 110 like what i think this fight goes the distance most likely bro yeah, I but, see um, that. of course man I th yeah i think they just you know or over two and a half hits where it's like a late morano ko um, horrible, horrible prices. So, do you want to add anything? I don't have anything on this fight. It just gives me the heebie-jeebies, bro. Straight yeah, okay. up. It's going to be a rough week, bro. I can see why you don't want to get in on this, bro. It's crazy. We'll have some shit, though, for this one. I feel like it winds yeah. up coming out and paying off for us. Trevor yeah. Peak versus Charlie Campbell, bro. The fight of the fucking week, bro. This is going off. Woo! You want me to go like on this one? Yeah, go on, bro. Let, let me know what you're All thinking. Right, bet. So I took a shot on Charlie Campbell uh, submission, plus 900. Mm. But I just want to say something. I don't know if I actually believe in him at minus 175 on a money line side. And I'll tell you why. I think he's the better fighter. I think he has massive grappling upside. I think if he gets it to the mat, he should be the better fighter there, down there than Pete. Been competing in a lot of grappling tournaments as well. <laughs> My guy. Trevor Peak's got cardio. And he's just got the will to fight. You know, that guy's going to show up at practice every day. He's going to put in the absolute hardest work. He's never going to, you know, miss a, miss a practice. I feel like he's going to fight for your dollar every single fucking time he goes out there. Uh, he's yeah. not a guy I just want to get caught with my pants fading at, at a chalk. Uh, even if I, I think the other guy is a, a great fighter, um, he might just, you know, he, he could Homer Simpson you at any time. And I could totally see it happening to Charlie Campbell. Happened in his Dana White Contender Series fight. Beating the piss out of Chris Duncan. And one shot. Guy's IQ isn't the best at times. I hope he uses his grappling here. Because I had a plus 900 second on the submission. And I do think that's the read on the fight. Gen I actually genuinely think that's what happens here. Takes him down. Gets the back. Chokes him out. 
after a few, you know, strikes from the ground and pound. Okay. Uh, see a world where Peak wins this fight, man. I, I really could, bro. Charlie Campbell, bad IQ, gets clipped, uh, gets finished, either club and sub or KO. It's possible. Yeah, I like Peak in this fight a little bit. Um, I think that he's going to lose the fight for the most part because, you know, Charlie Campbell's <laughs> the better striker. You know, he's the better grappler. But Trevor Peak has that heart. He's got that underdog mentality. He's got that dog mentality. He's got that great chin. You know, I've got seen that him dog in him. He's got that dog in him. And, you know, that can't be, you know, that goes for a lot in, in MMA. You know, we've seen time and time again that goes for a lot. Shout out to Nate Landwehr last week. Um, so I think Peak can get a knockout in this fight. Yeah, obviously Charlie Campbell can, you know, maybe just out maneuver him. But Charlie Campbell ain't really the type of guy to like jab you, stay back, throw a teep, you're a keep you away. You know, you, you come close distance, he ducks under, he gets a takedown, he lands some ground and pound, he gets control time, he wins the first round, he comes out, he jabs you. Like, he ain't really that type of guy, man. Like, mm -hmm. how are you going to come forward like a bit of a madman, land some heavy shots? And I just think it's going to be a bit of a swing contest at times. I do yeah. think Peak will be able to make him brawl. And obviously in that fight, I favor Trevor Peak, you know, in a brawl. So if I think that the fight will end up being a brawl at some point, how can I not play Trevor Peak here as a big underdog? So, yeah, man, I like Trevor Peak in this spot, um, whatever. Trevor Peak KO, I guess, because I don't think that he's going to win minutes overall. You know, it's not impossible for him to yeah. win a decision where he maybe gets a knockdown in round two and then outlasts him in round three with some cage control, some clinch strikes, you know. A bit of a, a a sloppy war in round three not impossible to win a decision overall obviously i think the ko is a little bit more live but plus 220 ko and then plus what's one, up peak one, itd like, what's peak itd it's not great peak itd is plus 215 i would just take um, the itd at, at plus 215 over plus 220 i know there's no like chances oh yeah but it's just bro banana peel territory yeah of course um me personally i would play uh Obviously, like money lines better in my opinion. Um, okay. You wasn't you wasn't talking about that specifically. You was talking about ITD and KO, but yeah, um, I wouldn't even play ITD. I just played the, the, the money line. Yeah, could be a decision, bro. Uh, I'm I'm cool with that because I, I don't think Campbell covers the minus one sixty two uh, unless yeah, okay. he takes it to the ground and and just finishes him, which is why I took the sub at plus nine hundred. So what's the sub now? Like you plus you want to write a sub? Now? Yeah. Oh like, Jesus, bro. I literally think that's what it is the 375 bro do you yeah, want to baby down? clv all day i'll take is it is there any, any props you want to write down for this fight nah I, I don't really mind this fight too much man i told you i was going to be unopinionated this week and i kind of am being uh but still some more fights that i have stronger opinions on as we go okay yeah so yeah, it's tough, isn't it? Because when we don't have props, like it's tough to make parlays, bro. But yeah, anyway. no, no, no. I think we're gonna get some props going. I do. Yeah, true. All right. And then we'll we always add a sum at the end too. Like, oh, we forgot the two threes. We really yeah, true, know. true, true, true. Um, Bretsky Volta Walker. I'll take this one away, bro. This Volta Walker is some Russian guy. Like, look at this Russian man who's apparently brother of Johnny Walker. This is Sergey Spivak's dad, bro. Sergey Spivak's older <laughs> I agree, brother. Great, bro. That's so it's him. his older brother. <laughs> Apparently, it looks just um, like him, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. Apparently, it's um, no Serato. Yeah, apparently, it's fucking Johnny Walker's brother, but <laughs> it looks like Sergey Spivak's brother to me. Another funny thing about this dude is uh, his name's the Clean Monster. So I don't know if if we want to be calling him the Clean Monster. We can call him the Monster, and I ain't gonna have an argument. But if you want to call him the Clean Monster, I mean, you know, do what you do, boys. But like. I'll, I'll let you make that decision for you. Who knows, man? I don't, the guy's obviously genetically gifted regardless of how clean he is. But I just thought it's a funny nickname. Um, bro, he's a good fighter here. I, I mean, all right, all right, slow down, slow down, slow down. So, like, I think he's got potential for Walker, you know. He's been the laughing stock this week. You know, I've seen very, very, a lot of people laughing on, um, on, uh, on Twitter. And yes. I don't think that he's a bad fighter. I mean, he doesn't have great abilities right now but he's 26 years old he's six foot six he's got an 81 inch, inch reach so he's going to have a weight advantage a height advantage and a reach advantage and an age advantage and he's going to have a grappling advantage to where we've seen bretsky grappled before in his career i think he can be grappled again in his career and i think walker's going to be improving fight to fight i don't really think we're going to see much improvements 
out of Lucas Bretsky. I think the guy is who he is. I don't think he's a good fighter. I fade him on a contender series, a minus 400 favorite. Um, I think, you know, Walker's game is good for heavyweight. He's going to shoot takedowns. He's very strong. I think he can take down most of the division right now. I think Volta Walker can take down most of the heavyweight division today. Right? Today. Now, he doesn't have much from top position, but he can learn that. He's 26 years old. He's got time to learn it. And he's a big guy. It don't take much from heavyweight to get a stoppage because of the size and the weight, right? So if he just learns how to land some ground and pound, learns a few positions that he likes, maybe he's going to like the half guard better than the side control, whatever it may be, he needs one or two positions that he gets really good at, that he drills time and time again, and he's going to be a good heavyweight. I swear to God. Now, listen, someone's going to fuck this dude up at some point. I'll tell you that right now. Like, he ain't going to be champion, but I kind of just want to speak against the massive, massive fraud um, narrative that I've heard this week from my fellow social media heads. Now, I don't, like I said, I don't think he's a great fighter. He's going to be found out, but he ain't a meme like his brother. He's got an actual game that he can do well at. Like Johnny Walker ain't winning free round decision. Volta Walker can win free round decisions. I'll tell you that now, you know, just, just from the grappling. But it's a big step up in competition, I guess, from Alex Nicholson. Um, you know, it, it, UFC debut, UFC jitters. You always got to worry a little bit, but I think Volta Walker's probably going to win the fight um, via grappling. What do you think, bro? Yeah, I think you cash this, actually. Uh, Brzezki, from what I'm seeing, big public underdog this week. Yeah, the line's moving. But I, I, I don't I don't agree with it. I think Walter Walker, you're gonna start to get a better price on him. I think he's got takedown upside. I know Brzezki looking in better shape, but just don't like the amount of love I'm seeing on a guy who's got three losses in a row. His his win was against Dylan Potter, where he looked sloppy in that fight as well. Dylan Potter, one of the worst fighters I've ever seen going into round three with that guy. Bad luck. Knocked out in his last fight. Um outed on the mat by Carl Williams. Good wrestler, great wrestler, actually. Just couldn't get the finish there. Gassed a little bit. So I think people started to, you know, say, abraziski has got a shot against Walker. Walker gasses late in the fight. But then, while well, you just get a better better live number, in my opinion. Or about the two, three props. So no real strong read on this fight. But I, I think you cash this uh, bet, bro. I do. I think they both win their fights. I think uh, the other girl, and I, I think Walker as well, wins this fight. He just gets it done. Um, going against the public dog again. Going to go with Walter Walker. Let's go. And uh, Hey, Jive Picks saying, what's up, fellas? Keep up the good work. Yeah, I'm going to give a yeah. shout out to a fellow capper here. Uh, hey, Jive Picks. You can go check him out on YouTube and stuff. He works for the guys over at Home of Fight. And it's funny because, you know, you get a lot of people who are in this community and they just hate on the other man in the community. Right? Wait, wait, so wait, like, wait, wait. Sorry. What's it called? What's who? he from? Home of Fight. Home of fight. Oh, bro, I, I, I you're gonna think I'm. I thought you said homo fight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even kidding you, bro. I was like, what's he from? <laughs> Home of fight is a yeah. Uh, I know that one. Okay. Page, and now they make like content clips yeah. from the Die Hard MMA podcast. Works for them. Um, and you know all of those cappers that work there, they're all very friendly. You know, a few of them have DM me saying like, oh, you know, good stuff, mate, or give me some tips on content and stuff like that, just randomly out of nowhere. And I appreciate that because a lot of people in the industry, um, they just hate on the next man. You know, I don't know what it is. It's just weird community. You know, they're like, oh, this guy's a kappa and I'm a kappa. So now I have to call him an idiot or I have to hate on him or I have to say whatever. So it was re it was very, um, you know, interesting to see all these guys like throw a lot of praise my way. It threw me off a little bit. I'm like, damn, I'm used to like other kappas talking shit. But actually these guys are like, bigging me up so shout out to all of them i'm giving them a shout out now on my podcast hopefully people can go and watch their stuff they got a lot of free content as well and you know that's that's the ilk i'm from i'm always trying to give people uh, the limelight i'm always trying to give people shine a lot of people that you see on twitter today i was the one who um gave them a platform you know i brought them on my podcast i brought them on twitter and you know a lot, most of them don't mention it today and it is what it is they're doing their own thing i don't really care but a lot of people on there I gave their I gave a platform to. And that's because when I first came onto Twitter, Z's MMA gave me a platform. You know, like I, nobody knew me. 
And I went on to Z's podcast, and Z's not really around anymore, but shout out to my guy. I'll always respect him for that. I'll always um, give him a shout out for that. And so I tried to do the same. JB, not long ago, like a month ago, four weeks ago, I did a podcast where I just literally brung on cappers I've never heard of just to give them limelight. You know, I brung on like six different people on my podcast. I don't know if you guys watched that one. You probably did. And I just give loads of people a platform. So I like to do that. And um, yeah, just seeing the shout out from those guys. Um, I just wanted yeah. to give them a shout out. I just wanted to pay it back because, yeah, those guys are good guys there. And they know what they're talking about. They make some good content as well. So yeah, go and support the guys, Home of Fight. Yeah, man. It reminded me of something that I wanted to say too, actually. Um, somebody commented on my thing like uh, about the, you know, this is back in the life of lucrative Lou and the Jew. But um, they commented like, yeah, lucrative MMA, don't work with that guy. Well, that's funny because like, um, you know, a few people were asking me to be on this podcast. It's the same thing. Like, uh, you know, I work with you. I appreciate it. But like, you don't have to have me on this podcast. It doesn't matter. You literally just listen to the people brought me on and uh yeah. you know you, you're adding you got this whole big thing going on right you had in this crazy jew it's crazy dude <laughs> so i appreciate it my brother and yeah, uh cool. i'm gonna make it i'm gonna make it worthwhile my guy we're gonna get this money and uh we're gonna build long lasting memories and friendships bro that's for sure that's it mate we, we have fun every time we do this podcast i like chatting to you you know what i'm saying like it's good fun well, we come up with some good bets. We ain't been on a good run in the last couple of events, but I mean, it's just, just MMA. I don't really care. You know, Parlay madness, bro. Nobody else is out there is doing a show like this. Facts. So, um, yeah, man. I, I, well, long may it continue, bro. Long may it continue. So, I think we both agree he's going to win. And so, we'll yeah. write him down. Um, you know, big odds. Maybe we won't use him in a parlay, but we'll write him down anyway. Walker minus 225. What else we got going on? Um, see him getting KO too, even. Yeah, probably. Um, I could see kind of overall, but what's the what's yeah. KO plus one twenty is kind of shit, you know? Yeah, they're saying the same thing. Yeah, decision plus two fifty. I mean, I just think you get knocked out by Cortez, but Cortez is a little bit quicker. He's like a legit boxer as well. Um, you want to write? Um, Kyle, or do you, any props you want to write? Or? I'm good on that, bro, on this fight. I have props for the other fights, but not on this one. Not going to force it. All right. Um, you see anything? No, nah, not really, man. I don't really know, bro. It's a bit of a risk, bit of a risk. Yeah. Um, Ignacio Bahamondas versus Christos Gargos. This fight reminds me of the Zellhuber fight for Gargos, and I think it's going to go the same way. I think Gargos is going to start sharp. I think he's going to do well in round one. I think he's going to gas out. And I think he's going to get choked out. Um, call it a lazy cap. That's just how I cap the fight. Even if I didn't see the Zellhuber fight, I probably would still say the same way. Um, I actually played the under in the Jagos and Zellhuber fight because I knew it was possible that Zellhuber could get a submission. Um, and I think it's the exact same thing here, to be honest, man. Bahamondas is going to, you know, like Bahamondas 2 3 is a system play. And, you know, I ain't got much more to say than that, JB. Uh, what's your breakdown of the fight? Yeah, I took the shot at plus 550 for the front choke for the sub, but it's yeah. feeling like it might be a little bit, uh, uh, what's the word, mush, mush, whatever they say. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's my only worry on it. But yeah, read the fight the exact same way, bro. Been looking at it for weeks. I'm like, bro, this guy's getting choked out. It's the exact same read I had on the uh, Rosa versus um, Ramos fight. Yeah. Why? Yeah, like, dude, I just watched this guy get his neck grabbed up. Slowest takedown from Giagos too on Zell Huber. Zell Huber hurt him bad. I think Zell Huber's a little bit sharper with the um, power shots than Bahamanda's, but it's the same thing. Like he builds as the fight goes on. I think Giagos panic shoots sub round two. Round yeah, three. so yeah. two free is plus four twenty. Let's write that down. Um, I, I like got to be a parlay buster somewhere on this card. Though I'm gonna be straight up. It could be later, but um, do you um? So, submission, we said? I do, but what's the line now? Still get plus 400. I mean, we're both reading it, right? Yeah. I'm calling yeah. it. I'm, I'm picking it out right. So, plus 400. Yeah. That's kind of how I feel about the Campbell one, too, dude. Um, yeah, straight up. Both, both. I mean, I bet it. So, uh, if I bet it at plus 550 and... 300 is not That's great. I'll bet online. Though. Pretty fucking know. shit, bro. Yeah, bet okay. online, you know. Bet online is the worst of the entire thing. So I think I'll leave it. Um, okay. 
I mean, we'll write it down, but like, I don't, I probably personally it's want it. It's crazy. Because, well, we uh, might need it. We might need it. So, um, yeah. And then Baja money line is what? I, mean, I always put the money lines first. Baja. 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 Right. The goat. Baja. Ha, ha, ha. Baja. Ha, ha, ha. What's that? Minus 340. All right. Whatever. Hey, we're running through this one pretty quick, mate. Are we? Yeah. Nice. Only an hour so far. Like three fights left. Not bad, not Looking bad. Beautiful. It's because I'm fucking um tired. It's because I'm, I'm tired, bro. I'm just like no energy. Dude, whatever, but... dude. Watch it. I think it works out. <laughs> yeah, we're getting the information out at the end of the day, man. Um, yeah, that's the point. Back... That's where people come from. Yeah, exactly, man. Like, obviously, it's good to go off on rants every now and then. And I didn't do any rants this podcast. I guess I gave a little bit of a positivity rant. You know, I said shout. I gave the the home of Fight Boys a shout out, and. Um, that's the only rant I really went on today. I didn't really say too much else. What else did I say? Now, you know, I got to at least do one rant per show, but maybe I'm just feeling good today. Maybe I just do the um, the uh, the positivity rant, you know? Yeah, fake we time. need fake time. <laughs> We're going through our fake time. This well, guy, fake. for some reason, bro, have you got a fetish of me saying bang or something? Like, come on, bro. You've asked me twice now. Now, I'm joking. Maybe you're my guy, bro, you know, like, but come on, man. All you need to do is rewind it. I did say it, bro. All right, Morgan Charrier versus Chepe Mariscal. Um, oh, yeah, the fake rant. True, 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 true. That was a rant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went on the rant about the fake stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because it's all fake. And this is a banger of a fake fight. Like, do you want to wanna give us your breakdown on this one? Because I think it's a close fight. And I don't think it's the easiest fight to break down in the world. And I don't have a great read on it. There's a spider right there. Bro, spider. And what the hell was that noise? Did anybody hear that? No, it sounded like a whale or something, I swear. I think bro, I you heard that, right? Yeah, bro. What was it? Is it can anyone bro, there's a spider right here? He's proper tiny, you know. Bro, all right. I'm keeping my eyes peeled because I live in a heavy uh, you know, there's a lot of animals in my area. Animals? Uh, what what yeah. do you mean, bro? Animals in I've, your area. I have seen a bobcat. America's a mad I have, place. I have what seen animal? a bobcat. Can you see? About ten feet away from me, bro. At what? night. What? A bobcat. what, what, what? A hop cat. A bobcat. A bobcat. Yeah. What's a bobcat? Like a like a small like a. Dem Can anybody explain a bobcat in the comments? Bobcat. I want to call. It, yeah, man. There, there. It was really weird looking. Very big cat. Looked at me. Can, yeah. can this attack you? Yeah, bro. Are they common? Do they attack common commonly? I don't want to find out. <laughs> Where I do you live, bro? Texas. Yes. This thing stared me in my eyes, James. Stared me in my eyes. Are they much bigger than a domestic? Yes, cat? yes. Hissed at me, dead in my face, and just like I just ran. But that's just massive, ran, you know. That's it compared to a lion, then adult lion. Yeah, I heard somebody's dog, so I think that's what it is. But yeah, basically, long story short, I like Sherrier here. I think he has the cleaner striking. He fights super close. Um, I think he could find a knockout, though. I've seen this guy. Uh, Mariscal chinned a few times. I don't know how like much I'm rating his chin because I think you know people think he's a little bit chinny, so it's kind of baked into the line. Um, I like Cherry striking though, man. He seems to be improving as the younger fighter. I think he has the grappling defense. I like everything he does to get away from the grappling, get on top. He's very positionally smart. Um, <laughs> mauled by a bobcat. <laughs> Yeah, dog, it definitely came from my fucking booty hole. I just looked over to make sure, like, you know, living an animal. Yeah, That's actually bro, pretty funny. Don't get mauled fucking live on stream, but you just be able what to choke it? out anyway, man. Mariscal's tough, though, man. He's got good cardio. Yeah, I'm choking the hell out of that, Bobcat. Uh, good cardio. He's fought a really tough level of competition. But, like, man, some of these wins I ain't raiding. They were back in the day, pre-UFC. So, how much do I really um rate that? My man James would kill a Rue. Don't 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 even Black don't man. even mess with him. Dude, he's smacking that Rue across the head. Got no uh, takedown defense, bro. It's just a striker. <laughs> Kangaroo's a pure boxer, bro. I can, Dude, you I get can, right in on the hips, bro. it's I'll over, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I think Cherry has everything to defend the, the, the grappling here. Mariscal's tough. He's gonna come forward. I think if uh Cherry could keep this fight clean, he wins. So uh, he's saying decision. I actually think KO is live as well. Um Due to the chin of Mariscal. We've seen it crack before. 
bro, this guy's um. This guy's underrated my ground game, bro. <laughs> How are you going to take a one-dimensional boxer over me, bro? Dude, you could legitimately just grab his pouch. And that's a wrap, yeah. bro. You just grab that pouch, bro. It's over. Or you can choke out a kangaroo. I've seen a kangaroo choked out before by a rear naked choke. Are you kidding? No, I've seen that, man. These Australians are wild, bro. They, they fight <laughs> kangaroos in that. But rear naked, bro? You didn't want to box the dude? He said, I'm a grapple. You gotta go behind them, cause bro, they got they got. You know what? They're not just a boxer. You know what? They got the teeth yeah. as well. You know, bro, they got the one teeth. The gut. Bro, they oh. got the teeth to the gut, solid to the gut, bro. So you gotta be careful. They're not fully Muay Thai. They're kind of like basically boxers with with a teeth, but a very strong teeth. But they ain't got no ground game, Kevin. Come on, man. <laughs> um, speaking of ground game, I don't think we're gonna see it in this fight. I don't think either fighter is gonna shoot takedowns too much. And if they do, yeah. I think. Both fighters are good enough to defend the takedowns for the most part. I think it's going to be a striking fight. And I think um, I think Morgan Sherry is the better striker, to be honest. I think he's got more diversity on the feet. I think he's got more tools. And I think he's going to be able to outpoint Chepe Mariscal here. Um, Chepe's been KO'd a couple of times, but I do think he's a very tough guy. Um, yeah, I'm going, I'm going with Morgan Sherry here. It seems like we're both going with Morgan Sherry here. Yeah, I don't really have that many strong reads on this card, bro. I'll be honest with you, I'm, like, way more confident in UFC 300. Um, yeah, yeah, I like Cherry here. I think he actually can get a finish, bro. I really do. Yeah, shout out to Buck Mar the Buck Marsh boys, which is a, a ridiculous Buck. name, but that's the crew that Lee Murray was part of, the biggest okay. uh, the biggest bank robber of all time. Um, or they robbed the most amount of money in, in world robbery history. He's from he's from London. They took like over a hundred million dollars in cash. Imagine how much cash that is, bro. They 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 um they basically filled up massive vans with like notes, and they had to leave hundreds of millions behind because they didn't have enough space. I think it's the biggest cash the problem to, have. to this day. Yeah, he's a guy. I think I spoke about him before on his podcast. Lee Murray fought in the UFC. But he also really? did a um, the biggest bank robbery of all time. What a yeah, fucking true. life to live. Yeah, madman. Then he's fled to Morocco and he's he's been in Moroccan jail for the last 20 years or something. A big petition to get him out and stuff. Probably like where that. Fernando Rodney's at right now. Yeah, hopefully he's out soon. Lee Murray, free Lee Murray. I mean, he robbed a bank like 20 years ago. Like, come on, bro. It's a long time. You know what I'm saying? Some people kill motherfuckers and get 10 years, bro. Mm. So, like... You know what I'm saying? We won't get into all the legality of that, but yeah, he's Free done Lee. it. Free Lee. Uh, Morgan Sharia, money line at minus 120. Yeah, we're feeling that. Um, what else are we saying? Do you, you like KO? I like decision. Um, okay, so let's just leave it at that then. Well, yeah, but we got our own parlay, so decision yeah, you're is right, you're 200, right. and then KO 225. So you do you want to write any, do you want to write your one down? I could see either or, though. Like, I just don't really have a strong read on it, bro. I'm going to write a decision. Okay. Um, but I don't know if I'm going to use that, to be honest. I don't think I will use. But what I might use is GTD. I know you don't like it, but whatever. I'm not. There's no strong feeling. I'm just giving my reads on the fight. I, I think KO is live as well. Yeah. Um. All right. What else we got? I see decision probably, yeah, a little bit more, like 75, 25, to be honest with you. Maybe even 80, 20. So for the number, actually, decisions like way better. Okay. The All great right. ape. Can you take this one away? The great ape versus the leech. We got Damon Jackson coming in at 35 versus Alex Hernandez coming in at 31. Um, Alex Hernandez, you know, on a little bit of a win loss streak. When he comes in, he comes in strong in the first round. He's got a lot of power. We've seen David Jackson put out as well. I think I think Alex Hernandez is going to win this fight based off athleticism. He's clean. If he doesn't fall apart, later the fight goes. I don't think David Jackson has the pressure or the chin to push the pace that is going to break Alexander Hernandez. And I think that's eventually going to show in this fight. So I like Alexander Hernandez. I think he could even get a finish um, in this spot. Uh, we've seen Jackson Chen a few times. And uh, who is his wins against, like, as of recently? Let's go look. Uh, click on David Jackson if you do not mind, please. 
Um, yeah, he ain't been doing too much, bro. Right. So this is what I wanted to talk about. Kamala Kirk, not in the UFC anymore. Char- uh, Charles Rosa, not in the UFC. Dan Argetta, a uh, weird fight where, uh, you know, Dan Argetta was on short notice, yeah. came in, and almost, he was fucking him up in the third round. I'll Pat Sabatini, god-awful chin. Dan Ige puts him out. Billy Quarantio, not a finisher, so he didn't finish him. But Jackson, yeah. yes, pretty fucking bad there, man. So uh, I know Hernandez did gas against Billy Q, but that's just stylistic matchup. Um, yeah, I, I like uh, Alexander Hernandez here to get the job. I mean, we could go in on Alexander Hernandez, right? But I think yeah. he's just a little bit um, better. Let's, let's click on him as well, actually, real quick. Let's just talk about this. Hernandez yep. missed week. So did Jack. The Jackson looked awful on the scales, actually. Yeah, yeah. you know, not on Moicano is a good fighter. Uh, but Breeden, not really the best win. Jim Miller, pretty good win. Algio beat him, though. Quarantillo finished him. So this guy's had problems when he's in the fights with pressure fighters like Algio, like Quarantillo. Um, but just not the best level of wins either for this guy, Hernandez, in the, in a while. But he has a wins against uh, Trinaldo, Dariush as well, if I'm not mistaken. So... You know, when this guy's at his best, we've seen it. He can get uh, the job done. I think uh, I think Hernandez is going to win this fight just off of youth, off of what I've seen as of recently, and uh, get a bounce-back win here. Yeah, I feel you, man. Uh, I agree completely. I think uh, he's a much better athlete. I think he hits hard. I think he hits fast. I think when he has a big athletic upside, he wins the fight. And if you go back and see a lot of his fights that he's won, he had an athletic upside against everyone he's won in the UFC, really. Um, against, Except for maybe Orbin Mercier. But that was a long time ago. That was probably his best performance in the UFC, the performance against Olivier Orbin Mercier, because I do rate Orbin Mercier. I think he's a good fighter. And for him to win that fight there, um, it was a very back-and-forth fight, you know, a lot of wrestling involved. That was a good win there. And after that, he lost against Donald Cerrone in a fight. He was very comfortable, and he was a big favorite in that fight, minus 2 225, and he kind of went downhill after that. Um, I remember him speaking a lot at the press conference, saying he was going to run through Cerrone. That was after Cerrone had been run through a couple of times, and he got beat by Darren Till, and that kind of boosted Darren Till up, and Alexander Hernandez wanted to do the same thing, and he got the vet lesson there. You know, Cerrone outlasted him, finished him in the second round. And then... Um, yeah, he's not a great fighter. Like overall, he doesn't put his skill set together all the time. But I think that he's got enough to beat Damon Jackson here. I mean, the way Damon Jackson wins fights is usually by takedowns, getting the back, pace and pressure. I don't think he's going to be able to do that against Jacks um, Hernandez. Hernandez has too much power coming back at him, and I don't think Jackson does that very well with power punches or athletic punches. So, yeah, I like Hernandez here. Yeah, I like Hernandez to get the KO actually. Um, so I'll write all of that down. Hernandez money line. Minus 200. Dude, what was that one fight where Jackson got subbed? It was like his fucking neck was behind uh, the dude's back. I forget which fight that was. I don't think it's going to happen here. I think he probably gets KO'd, if anything. Jackson. But, bro, like, what, you, what, what, J- Damon Jackson just gets finished in, like, the most violent ways. You ever seen those videos? This guy's just getting smoked, bro. Kevin oh, against, uh, yeah, Medeiros. Medeiros, yeah, bro, that one was reverse bulldog choke. Like when yeah, the I fuck, on, bro? I see that on Twitter like today. I think that was fucking brutal. Yeah, bro, that's sick. Like uh, mm. I've never even seen anything like that. But this guy yeah, usually gets true. He does get finished in brutal ways, man. You're right. Big knee, bro. Taporia finish was fucking disgusting. Probably my favorite knockout ever in MMA. Yeah, bro, that one was sick. And uh, yeah. Even the Ige one was pretty fucking awful. So, probably seeing it happen here again as well. Um, yeah, Hernandez. Um, let's see. I like Hernandez. round one. I like round one KO as well. Even though I could so see it in, in, in any round, um, personally. And then, like, uh, Saif Saud comes in and, like, yells at uh, Jackson while he's, like, cold unconscious on the mat. Three thirty-five. That's nice, you know. Yeah, I think I just think KO is the same as KO one or near, you know. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, Jackson's a fucking wet white, bro. A lot of people are gonna speak about. Um, I'm joking. A lot of people are gonna speak about you know Hernandez not having a great gas tank, but I don't think um, Jackson doesn't have the greatest gas tank either. No, he, doesn't. Bro. he doesn't. 
And like uh, Hernandez breaks when people are pressuring him. I don't think that Dax Jackson has the striking or the durability to do so. He'd have to clip Hernandez, get lucky in my opinion. How do I cap weight misses or do you think it matters, bro? Unless they look really terrible, I don't cap it too much, to be honest, bro. It's just a case-by-case basis. Um, yep. I just have to watch them and actually see them physically on the scale. Or obviously, if I'm worried that they won't make weight and then they don't, then you know sometimes I cap it. Um, but yeah. I've seen Bobby Green come in with like half of an eye against Grant Dawson and then knock him out in five seconds. Yeah, it's tough. That's it. <laughs> like, yeah. The, the, the weigh-ins will play tricks on you time and time again, so it's quite tough. Ooh, this is a good one, bro. Yeah, um, rematch on the first fight. First fight was looking about 50-50 on the feet. You know, Alan was throwing some good leg kicks, some good body kicks, some good volume. He was busting up Curtis's eye. Curtis's eye was swollen really, really bad. Uh, if the fight went on for a couple of rounds, I think Curtis would have basically not been able to see out of that eye. But the fight didn't go on for a couple of rounds. Curtis ended up knocking him out with a beautiful um, short right hook. You know, he threw like a long left screw shot uppercut to the body it was very interesting and then um you know southpaw guy and then come back with a short right hook over the top and knocked him out brendan allen doesn't have the greatest chin of all time i've seen him wobbled a couple of times now on the feet you can't trust him on the feet in extended periods in my opinion um but chris curtis you know his upside in a fight is never that huge you know he never pulls away on minutes he's never cleanly winning a fight i don't think I can't really remember too much where he's just cleanly winning the fight all rounds. Usually he gets a knockout, or if he doesn't get a knockout, it's a close fight. So, yeah, I I, um, I think that the fights, you know, the line might be a little bit wide. Maybe there's some value on Chris Curtis here. It's tough for me to play Chris Curtis just because I think that the the on the feet is about 50-50. You know, it's close to 50-50. Um, Curtis obviously has the upside in durability, which leans it more towards him. But then Alan has the upside in maybe volume and range and just the way he can dictate the the range if he's smart. So there's a little bit upside there. Also, he, he fights with multiple weapons, whereas Chris Curtis is basically a boxer. Alan will throw head kicks, body kicks, you know, all of that stuff. So um, it's fairly close to 50-50 on the feet. But then Brendan Allen has the grappling upside here, as he does in most fights. We saw in the first fight, he took Curtis down and jumped on his back straight away. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets some back control in this fight, could even win a round via back control, could win two rounds via back control, could potentially even submit Chris Curtis, who's never been submitted in about 40 fights or something. I don't think it's impossible that that could happen here. At the end of the day, someone takes your back, like submission is always becomes live once that happens, especially because Chris Curtis does give up his back in every single fight I've ever seen him. Fight where he get taken down. He got taken down by Amarvov. He gave his back up against Allen. He gave his back up, got his back taken. Um, so, yeah, Allen makes some bad decisions in the octagon as well, even in his fight with Chris Curtis. He made a few bad decisions. He jumped for a leg lock, you know, with 10 seconds to go in the round and lost in the round like an idiot. So I wouldn't be surprised if he does something like that and gets caught. Um, I'm going to say there's some value on Chris Curtis here. Don't know if I'm going to play it personally. Um, but, yeah, that's my read on the fight, man. I don't have a strong read, to be honest. If anything, I guess I'd play Curtis. What do you think? Yeah, I get the heel hooks with short time. You're going for a move, but it did kind of look a little bad in that spot, um, for sure. Yeah, I guess so. The thing is, he just lost him. It lost him the round. No, bro, it was a bad it mistake, great, bro. Know? I get where he was coming from, but it, in hindsight, bro, I I know he thinks like, bro, I wish I didn't do that. Um, yeah. But then once he get knocked out, what does it really matter anyway? But I, I yeah. know that fight sits in Allen's head for sure. I know he wants to get his revenge. Curtis it does have hometown here, but he is coming in on short notice. Is getting a bit older, a little bit slower. I think Allen's got some clean striking that people are sleeping on here. Um, I think he has some ground finishing ability as well. This guy's been able to finish a few guys on the mat as of recently who have a lot better ground game than Chris Curtis, who I think has been taken down in a few fights now. Imavov got him down. You know, his takedown... Defense held strong early, but I think, you know, as people start to get a beat on him, you could still get this guy to the mat. And once you are able to get this guy to the mat, you know, he's not a believer in the BJJ. Yeah, he said he's been grappling for 17 years, but it's just not the same level of Allen. If Allen gets it to the mat, he should be able to submit him. If he's able to submit Paul Craig, he's going to be able to submit Chris Curtis, in my opinion. Oh, you could say he did have the back in the last fight, and it didn't wind up playing out that way. Um, I think that wasn't on the ground. It was a standing body triangle. More so. I like Allen to get a finish here, man. I think Curtis is a public underdog. Straight up. I think a lot of people are betting him this week. 
I think uh, Brandon Allen is looking to get a finish here. Grappling upside, clean striking, got the body kicks, got the high kick as well. Uh, I could even see ground and pound. I like Brandon Allen to get a finish here. I could even see a KO. A lot of people call him the sub. Mm -hmm. um, and I like the under two and a half here. I think Allen either gets this to the ground, finishes him, um, or Curtis could even eventually find a knockout because we've seen the issue. Uh, Brandon Allen's chin, if that wasn't the problem, he should be minus 400 here, like he was in the first fight. But now after a knockout, you're giving him minus 190. So you can say the line is wide. I think it might have been wide the first time. I think mm. we're getting an improved version of Allen here. And I think he gets the um, win, Could most likely via sub. But I'm not counting the, out the KO either. So I'm going to just say Brendan Allen gets it done, ITD. Yeah, fair enough, man. Um, all right, so what's Allen sitting at right now? Allen's sitting at a clean minus 220. Um, so what do you want to I'm going to let you put some stuff down because I don't have a big read. Minus 212. Yeah, I like Allen. I like Allen of uh, ITD. And that's it. Like That's my read on the fight. Let me just see the props and the numbers, though, so I could tell you. Who are they? Uh, fight on ITD minus 210. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, it's ITD plus 100. So they're saying that. What's sub? Plus 125. So that's my thing is like, and then why are they only giving you plus 650 on the KO? That's a little weird. Um, but I actually think it's a KO. Open plus 365. What? What? I think I think he gets the KO via head kick here. Um, that's my read on the fight. Come back to that later this week. And you can call me uh, Nostradamus here. Um, but I'm going to go with uh, ITD just to play it safe. Okay. Plus 100. So you want me to write it down or, or not? Yeah. Yeah, I like it. I actually think he could get... Do you th I, I think he gets it done early, bro. All right, I'm like, too, too, but, but let's just play it safe. Let's go with ITD. Yeah, I mean, up to you, bro. Like like I said, I don't I don't think there's a little bit of value on Curtis, but I don't really have too much to say about that one. Right. Yeah, man. All right. See, a lot of people playing goes the distance. They're overs, so... Um, not not too confident in that. Rather just take Allen. I think he finishes it. All right, so that's it, boys. We've broken down the entire card for you, but now it's for the fun part. It's where we make these um, mother effing parlays. Now we haven't been doing great on the parlays lately, unfortunately, but we're going to try and have another crack at it. I wonder what is our overall. Um, What's our overall profit and loss right now? People forget that we could hit like two weeks in a row and be up like crazy, you know? Well, what happened was we hit, we had a good run where we hit like multiple parlays on multiple mm -hmm. shows throughout the year. And then what happened is it, it covered us for the next, I think it was like 45 shows yeah. or something. We put in 11 parlays too. And then you got to remember we're counting the JB special for one unit every time. Whereas, like, nobody's actually putting a full unit on that, right? Probably yeah, but it's be. better to do a unit. But it's just the right way to count it, right? It's you easier. Know? Instead of but, like, it's, it's also way. easy for the people to shit on us who are, uh, you know, okay. like, fucking. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, as if, uh, you know, you put $25 on that uh, plus 3005 a few weeks ago. You're fucking eating, bro. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we UFC um, two ninety eight. They said it was so. That was February seventeenth. People are saying it like, oh, but when you're hitting a thirty to one, I want to see you guys make a show, give out a thirty to one, see when you hit. Bro, last week we had um, Weidman wins ITD, and Lofram Bacheco ends ITD. That disgusting, was, bro. That's like disgusting, that's bro. That's There's a few. We... Should have cashed. I should say. Should have. Should have. That was crazy that a Pacheco fight went to a decision. Eh? There was a few of them, bro. We literally would have hit a hundred and like fifty to one if Sam Patterson didn't get a submission in round one and get it in round two. The week before was the worst one, bro. When we Dude, there's so many we've been so close to. It's a oh. joke. All right, here we go. I just wanted to have a look at this. So yeah. overall, no other show is actually tracking what they're doing, bro. We're the most legit in the world, bro. Literally tracking our fucking. Parlaying props, bro. 
we're parlaying props. Parlaying props on the last <laughs> show and um, on the last, what is it? On the last, the last day before the fucking, the last day of the market. And yeah, so we've won 50 units this year mm. and 62% ROI. It's beautiful. And average odds, 49.15. What does that uh, like equate to? Plus 490? Or am I tripping? Where? Where is it? Average odds at the top, right? Bro, that's bro, that's plus 5,000, bro. <laughs> Our average yeah. odds are plus no way. Yeah, it's 49 to 1. It's plus 5,000. Yeah, 4, dude, we're 000. giving out plus 5,000, guys. So, plus, yeah. Uh, 4,900 is, um, yeah, plus 5,000. <laughs> Um, what's narco saying i didn't say anything what did i say i got i would have had to remember it It it's probably some type of joke damn oh is it like he he, is he before did i say because we're betting into props on the last day before but that Um, well what did i say about my man narco shout out to my man narco anyway i don't know what i said my guy right there every time Um, i let up the blunt on the podcast he's a skedaddling Narco's the man, bro. Oi, I'm I'm doing well, a live yeah. Lambo. Listen, I, I ain't gassing, boys. Listen, I am doing a live Lambo Clays podcast in a motherfucking Lambo with my man Narco. You know, Narco's going to be hosting it. I'm just going to be in a Lambo. Like, if Narco wants to come meet me, uh, it'll be a pleasure, and I'll be in the Lambo with him. But if not, he's going to just have to get me on as a guest. And I'm going to be in the Lambo <laughs> as a guest on the Lambo Place podcast. I've been saying it for two years and it's coming this year. Let me tell you that now. And also the Parlay Madness live stream, but actual live stream in real life live stream is coming. Me and my man, JB, I'm coming all the way out there to the Bobcat Jungle, Texas, Jeez. wherever he lives. And we're we doing a live, live podcast. Nah, live nah, bro. Podcast. We gotta meet up in Vegas, big dog. That's where we going. Yes, sir. We gotta go Vegas, man. Have some big bets, make some videos, have a laugh. You know what I'm saying? Like that we'll guy's make- profile picture was crazy. Who? They got like a cat with a bow tie. Oh yeah, <laughs> the Bobcat Jungle. Um, Bobcat Jungle. But yeah, yeah, we we'll, we're we'll definitely we're killing it, bro. Let's fucking go. I didn't know we were doing that well. Everybody's talking smack. Got me feel like we're doing terrible. It's because they've just come in the last few weeks, which I understand. It could be a bit frustrating, frustrating. if you've joined in the last few weeks. But at the end of the day, man, that's just the nature of doing these long shot parlays. Like there are going to be weeks like that, and there's nothing I can do about it. Either I do that or I don't do the show. And you already know, like I can't stop the show. People are going to fucking kill me if I stop this show. So, yeah, fifty units of profit this year. Um, Hopefully, we can hit some parlays this week, JB. So, we'll get straight into the parlay, shall we? Yes, sir. All right. Um, what we got going on? So, parlay one. Like, You want to you wanna take anything away? Uh, is it on me? Is it me this what? time? It me? Is it me? It's up to you, bro. How are we going to do it? We'll go one, 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 one. Yes. Um, all right. I'll just do this one then. Okay. Um, You know, I feel pressure on these parlay shows to do like um, big ones. Yeah, to get like seven to one, six to ones. But no, nah, you don't have to. Sometimes I just want to do a three to one, two to one. You know what I'm saying? But like, that's kind of shit. And you won't let me do it. <laughs> um, I don't mind, bro. Trust me. All right. All right, all right. Let me get this up, though, because I want to. I want to get the uh, actual odds up on my other screen as well. Just in case I mean, I dude, I think that's what we got this week. I know it's kind of shit, eh? Like we don't have a lot. It's always good to do Budka finish props too. You're always allowed to add shit in. Whoops! I'm gonna put peak. Fuck off! I'm gonna put peak money line, and I'm gonna put him in with. You're not gonna do. You're not gonna do the dicks and OnlyFans, are you? Who is who's OnlyFans? Charlie Campbell. Norma Dumont. Yeah, I like I like the random and and, and, and um, Mariscal. Hey. So it'd be Cherry, eh? We got. Oh yeah, all. I like that. I like that. We got is, the, that, um, is that the only fans? Because I, I Dixon, like all three of them. Is Dixon in here, bro? Dixon, Can we get a might... verification. I think Dixon just made the parlay, bro. 
Dixon, can we get verification? <laughs> He's got to still be in here, right? He's everywhere. Parlay man is for 300. is going to be eight hours, bro. God. It's going to be 300 we, hours long. We killed it this week. We're, we're, we're running through this fucking quick. Dixon, if you're here, mate, like, come on, man. We, we're literally do, doing a parlay dedicated to you. Damn. That's it. He bounced. You might be right. Fuck like, it. I like that. We're going to have to add it up. He's going to rewatch this and be uh, very, very, very proud of us. Um. All right. What we got going on? Just oh, my the, God. Uh, action. Is it Action Network? I do. Parlay yes. Uh, parlay Calculator. All right. Plus 142, plus 105. Uh, minus one of five. Dude, when we oh. had me add them up, that's when we were winning. We got to go back to that. We changed the strategy. Plus seven six six. Oh, wow. that's a lot. That's a hilarious parlay, bro. D Dixon is gonna enjoy this very much. That's hilarious, bro. <laughs> bro, I, I caught like regardless of what, bro. I called all of them like. Obviously, they're, they're there for a reason, right? They're all here because we called all of them. I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that, to be honest, a lot. They all have only fans. <laughs> <laughs> so random, bro. Why does Charlie Campbell have a fucking only fans? Or Chepe Mar I'll make that money, bro. Bro, apparently Chepe Mariscal has a um, adult video, apparently. So that, like, doubles it down, bro. Oh, yeah. Disgusting, right? <laughs> How do you know, bro? Tape study. That's yeah? what they were telling me, bro. I don't know. These hey. fucking fuckers online Who's always day? telling Who's me. Oh, is JB Daggis? Yes, brother. Yes. Smash. Why? Because he got the big beard. Yes. The red, big old beard. Smash, brother. Smash. All right. I got to make a parlay now. CS capping service special. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me go with Dixon minus 340. Yeah, okay. I like my boy Victor Hugo. I ain't even gonna lie to you. Minus 134. I, I don't mind it. I'm gonna have to tape that one. It's nice odds. Yeah, man. Um, and then I'm gonna do. Well, I can't see him when you put the comment up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry <laughs> no, you're good. You're good, man. I'm going to go with – um. actually, I'm going to take out Victor Hugo. I'm sorry. I'm going to leave him out of this one. And I'm going to put in Hernandez KO1. So I'm going to do Dixon money line, and I'm going to do Hernandez KO1. And that's parlay two for me. That's a random one, eh? Plus 335 of a minus 340. Yeah, chalk and contrarian. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah, it's like – Three three five and minus three forty plus three three five and then minus what is that minus three forty? It's funny that we use bet online odds. Well, it's the right way to do it, but it's funny that we use bet online odds and then you can't even parlay the props on there. Yeah, it's true. Maybe we should change. I don't like, know why we use bet online odds. I don't really know why we started there. So or what's whatnot. this one saying that? Should I add? What if I add Hugo minus one thirty four? What does that make it out to? Yeah, could be good. Eight eight three. I kind of want to just take the two, bro. I feel like well, I'm going to probably take Victor Hugo KO anyway later. So I'm going to just leave it right here for now. Yeah, okay, easy. Parlay free. Yeah, we don't really have any big props this week, but that's no, cool. No, it's fine. It might bro. work out well. Get a cash. We need caches in our pocket. Yeah, we need cash. Right. Capital to carry us through these weeks so we can take some more long shots. I'm going to do Bahamondas 2 free. Okay. I think that should be in our goal this week. Like, make some cash, get some units in the pocket so we have some capital to keep going. Because I think, you know, 300, we're going to definitely be taking some shots. Yeah, true. Because, you know, it's still a long-term game, too, at the end of the day. We don't want to just be throwing out units, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, mm. you know, just keep it at the those two. What do I like with Bahamondes 2 free? Kind of like Hernandez. Okay. I don't want to like influence. We just also got to be careful about using too much Hernandez now, right? Oh, why have we used him a lot? Well, no, we just used him once, but we just got to keep it in mind that if we, you know, we're going to probably have him in the money buying parlay on top of that, blah, blah, blah. But just don't want to overexpose like we did last week because then if Hernandez does lose, 
yeah. shit, we're down three four of these then, you know. Yeah. I'm gonna see what I get if I add Walker. Thousand. Woo. Uh Woo. plus a thousand exactly? Yeah, oh no, like one twenty seven. Okay, okay. I was like, what? Let's go. Three leg parlay at plus one oh two seven. Do I want that ten to one or just because are we gonna use Walker in the money line parlay? Because if, if we are, I, I won't um I won't use him here. We probably would, right? Yeah, but that's okay. I mean we could use people twice. It's just like when I, I, I don't see want to three use him. when I see three times, that's when I start to get I it. I don't right. want to use him twice. Okay, then 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 we won't so, put him in the money oh, line parlay. Right, we just won't put him in the money line parlay then. Yeah. All right, sweet. Parlay four. You're, you're up, bro. I'm up. You're up. You're in Europe, not me. Um, no, I'm in Oceania. Oh, yeah. You're in uh, New Zealand. You're from I'm Europe. Born, I'm born and bred in Europe. But I ain't even yes. Europe. England. And it ain't yeah. the UK. I don't give a fuck about the UK. I'm from England. I read England, where I'm from. Proud Englishman here. You know, apparently it ain't cool to be proud where you're from now. Unless you're right. from a few select places on the globe. Fuck all of that. Mate, England, England, best country in the world. But Big Ben, where I'm from, London, that 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 city has fallen. Mm. So you know, your boy had to get out of that city. But obviously, um, I'm in a beautiful place now, not far from the Shire, brother. Throw those just down the road. So yeah, man, I have been to the Shire actually. It's, it's quite. Beautiful. I like my dude. Uh, can you scroll down a little bit so I can see the uh, oh yeah, full, uh, yeah, I like uh. I like Allen, ITD. I think that's legit. Allen, um, ITD, you feeling it? All right. Yeah. Damn, you like that one. You want plus one hundred? Yeah. You, well, reckon you want just th yeah? I don't. You want me to throw in Allen just money line instead? Like that's where I'm. You know. Dixon side is coming in. Dixon, where you been, bro? Where Can you we been? Please get an honorary parlay. The only thing I'll think about it, bro. I'll think about it, bro. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't know if we can do that. You know, I don't know if we can do that. <laughs> I don't think we can do that, Dixon. Like, like, why would we do that? That'd be pretty fucking dumb, bro. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> Dixon. Listen to the listen to the OG mushroom. <laughs> you think we weren't gonna fucking do it, OnlyFans, bro? You've been saying it all week, Dixon. You think we weren't gonna hit the honorary homage to our man? Biggest fan, you know, Mushroom MMA is in the building. We got our guy, uh, Sean Hanning. I think there's a there's a yep. bunch of. I don't want to forget a bunch of people either, so I don't uh, want to start going don't start off. naming names because then you're gonna forget someone. Yeah, exactly. Then people get upset. So I love all of you, and we had to get the OnlyFans part, man. <laughs> Dixon woke up. Mason, that's my guy too. Mason, that's yes, another sir. one. Shout yes. out, Mason. Yes. All right, back Let's on go. track. So and it's me now. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know, Ozzy. Are you about to make a joke? Because you got to be careful when you're chatting to Mushroom because you might just be walking into a joke at any one <laughs> time. So I don't know who Ozzy is. Let me know who Ozzy is or, or you're just playing with me right now. But, yeah. Oh, man. My phone died. I'm on 1% again. Jeez. Dixon got to lay off that cider. <laughs> Bro, okay, okay, all right. Um, I, like, I do like Alan. I do like Alan. Let's just go with... Uh, but if I'm going with Allen, I think he gets an ITD. Like, I honestly do. Fair enough. That's yours, bro. He gets the finish. You want. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm just kind of surprised. Not, not, I'm, don't change the parlay, obviously. I'm just saying, yeah. like, I'm just speaking about it, you know. Like, yeah, I like yeah. to have a discussion. But I'm quite surprised you think he gets it done more than 5 out of 10 ITD. But, yeah. It's a five-round fight. Yeah, five-round fight, bro. Yeah, that's my that's my thing behind it. And I've seen him get it on the mat and finish Paul Craig. Uh, he finished, who else was it, Puna? He finished everyone. Yeah, Puna that's what I'm Silver. saying. So so usually Kevin if he Holland. gets it, yeah, it's a finish. So I like the finish, yeah. All right, yeah. I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with, um, that's not a good no. juice. You're good, you're good, my fault. Um, it's just a tough, Victor Hugo I'm going to go with. Okay. Moneyline parlay going to be crazy this week, though. It'll be interesting. Yeah. I'm going to figure this out. Yeah. 
Okay, what's this boot me at now? Um, actually, scroll up a little bit. I'm sorry. Just up a little so I could see the parlay. It's Victor Hugo and who else? Allen ITD. <sighs> Bro, I, I, I don't know. I don't like, I'm not even trying to be funny. I don't know my ethnicity. Um, like, my family doesn't even know. It's a lot of shit. Matsumoto, I'm looking at decision. Um, but um, what's fight just goes the distance. Because that split wasn't looking interesting. But uh, plus 600, I don't know about. I think I might do it, though. Where is he? There he is. Um, that goes uh... the distance. Plus 215. Minus 250. What do you think about the split, man? Plus 600. Too too risky? I don't think you should put a split in a parlay. In a parlay? That's mad, right? Sorry. Yeah. I'm going Matsu. Because <laughs> you just, like, you're just relying on a judge. I just know? think like, the fight's so close. So I, I kind of want to yeah. just stick with, like, fight goes the distance then, if that's cool. All right. Minus 215, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What does that give me? I'm trying to keep it simple this week. About 500 or something, maybe. Uh, yeah, let's have see. a look. Plus one. And it's five units in the pocket for me. That gives me another five shots to make these yeah. crazy parlays. Minus 134, minus 215, 412. Let me see uh, the, the rest of the. I might just add in a, a favorite then. Uh, Bahamandas money line. Well, that just fucks wow. the parlay, possibly. Let me see what the odds are. So if it's yeah. like plus 700, I'll do it. Five six two. Nah, I ain't doing that shit. Leave him out of there. I'll just I'll just keep it where it was at. Because we're gonna have him in the money line parlay anyway. Okay. <laughs> delay. I'm a legend, brother. You already know. I, I do think it's a good call. I do think <laughs> it's a good call. Plus EV leg. Plus EV leg. I'm gonna leave Bahamandas out of this one, bro. I'm gonna just keep it at plus four, uh whatever. And then I'll 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 we'll put him in the money line parlay. All right. So wait, sorry, you wanna remove him? Yeah. Yeah. All right, and that's it. That's my parlay four plus four. That's perfect. 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 Usually it's me who's going crazy, but that's what the JV special is for. So, all right, parlay five is a joint parlay, boys. Well, yeah, two day part two dollar parlay on the split. Yeah, but... all right. Um. We didn't use Budka yet. He's just sitting there. Are you sure? We didn't use him. Yeah, now I'm positive. All right, fuck it. Bang. But we put him in the money line parlay, though. Yeah, I mean, we're going to have to use people twice this week. It's not a question. Like, if we're making a money line parlay, I think. Can we put Massimo decision in this parlay? We didn't do it before. You want to? Yeah, we got ghost the distance. All right. So if our ghetto wins, we just need the fight to go the distance. That's the big mm. catch there. I like Sharia GTT, but you don't like it, eh? Or Sharia decision, but you don't. I was thinking you know. about. I was thinking about using the GTD too. It's, we got slim pickings. Because mm. we ain't got that much more going on. <laughs> we really don't, bro. This is a weird week. Should we check GTD? Should we put GTD? Should we this do is it? A joint, this is a joint parlay, right? Joint, yeah. Or oh, we could do Hernandez like... KO, but we already did KO one and and money line. Yeah, I know that's a little risky. We didn't use Baja Mondes, uh submission. We didn't use Baja. Three hundred though, man. I don't know. That ain't like... really that good, and everybody's on it. Uh, yeah. I mean, we could like I. I mean, I'm picking it out right, but Dixon know. decision. Did we use her uh, twice yet? Nah, we didn't I use don't... her twice yet. Nah, we didn't use Dixon. I think we just used her once. Yeah. Okay. If she gets the finish, it would suck. But I mean, yeah, it's just decision. like how do like do I think she's gonna win? Like, all right, what upside do I think she? What upside do I give to her finishing? Um, on the ground. Yeah, I know. I'm just that's it. <laughs> how, like, do you think yeah. she finishes a lot? I, I think she might, you know. I do too. 
It's a, it's a it's an interesting one. Reminds me of the locker room fight, bro. Really what does. what's Dixon submission? Did we check? It's like plus four hundred, I think. That's, that's better. Good. That's better than submit uh, decision. Yeah. You know. I agree. But why didn't we write that down when we broke it down? Is there? I asked you to, but you you uh, you, you like the decision, bro. Oh, you did. I yeah. lean decision like I lean decision as in like uh, an outright pick, but I like not... the yeah I like the sub value. I do uh, plus four fifty. Even if we can get, I would like that. Oh, again, plus four seventy four hundred. Pretty decent, bro. I like the steam on it as well. Um, that, yeah, like as a bet, Dixon submission is what plus four hundred is ten times better than this. Yeah, my that's opinion. my read on the fight too. Like I said, I think Cornell gives up her back. I think Dixon RNC fake RNC brother. It's a fake RNC for the win. Yeah. But do we add it to the parlay? Like, that Could might you be always a, use it in the JB special. If you want. If I want, yeah. It's, it's, a bit, it's a bit mad to put it in that parlay. I don't... You like the Budka finish, though, right? Not really. I don't, I mean, really? yeah, maybe. But um, I'm not like... Listen. A, how much is the Budka finish? I don't think they gave me a lot for it. Otherwise, we would have written it down, isn't it? You're right, you're right. That's what it was. Yeah, 225. I can't really fuck with that too much. Uh, yeah. Oh, Dixon, we gotta do that, of course, bro. How could how could I be so rude, bro? AKA only fans fade parlay. AKA Dixon. Oh, no, it's, uh, I missed the dude. This guy is everywhere. I was so shocked when he didn't answer. I was like, what? This doesn't make sense, brother. All right, Dixon, you're locked in, bro. My guy. The man Dixon. I can't believe we're doing this, bro. That's that that that's a great parlay. Love you too, bro. I'm gonna love you even more if we catch this weekend, and everyone's oh, gonna man. love me and you if we catch this weekend. He'll be the legend. A, that's a nice angle, bro. And it all works out. You know, it's all lining up. The only fans fade just happen to randomly line up with our picks. Like, come on. I don't think that's um. And not only our picks. But our picks that we wrote down as well as plus EV legs, mm. not even just outright picks. I don't think that's a coincidence, man. We need just one more for this parlay, man. What are we doing? Matsumoto decision. Book car. Um, I mean, Dixon subs a mad one, but I'm not like super against it. Walker. Oh, we didn't add him to the money line. No, we said we was gonna. Sometimes it's kind of hard because we haven't done the money line parlay yet, so we don't know. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. No, I get it. We could put Sharia one. decision, but you don't like it. We could put Sharia GTD. Um, I, don't don't mind, mind, I don't mind, man. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. And honestly, that's what keeps coming up. So it's like, all right, let's check. We'll check. We always go Bahamandas too. Cop out. <laughs> Money line. Yeah, always. I mean it's 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 allowed. Yeah, it's allowed. It's allowed. See what we get here. I thought we'd get better than that. Plus four nine six currently. Yeah. I mean I did a plus four twelve. <laughs> mm, what else we got? Um Dixon. Dixon sub. Should we just fucking remove it and do Dixon sub, bro? You're feeling that, eh? Yeah, I didn't know it was plus 400. I like it. Plus 400 That's... on bet online is probably going to be the worst line of the entire market as well as they usually are with some of these problems. A thousand percent. A thousand percent. I might need it for the JB special. I don't know if I will. Maybe we come back to this parlay. Maybe we hit the parlay six. Yeah, can Maybe we, do we that? hit the money? Yeah, we can. We're allowed to. It's our show. <laughs> AK, the the fake parlay. <laughs> yeah, the TBD fake. All right, all right. We're coming back. We're coming back. We've never never been done before on the show, boys. We're coming back to this parlay because we want to know what legs we want to put in the JB special. Yeah. Exposure AK. matters. Yeah, exposure matters. So. We've got to the time of the show where it's time for JB to do his parlay special. It should be easy this week. Uh, let me just see what we got. Yeah. 
Mm. Yeah, Hugo KO, Dixon sub. That's it. Hugo KO. And Dixon sub. Okay. Yeah, that's it. That's huge. Massive. I want your opinion on that, Hugo KO. Okay, right. 20 to 1. Oh, I hope so. I think we're getting better than that, bro. Woo! 29 to 1. Yes, sir. Now, like, hold on. Yeah? Rounds. No. Don't really care for rounds this card. Yeah, that's perfect. JB Special, 29 to 1 this week, fellas. Let's cash it. Finally, please. I don't need eye pokes. I don't need Dobson getting knocked out randomly. I don't need Sam Patterson getting the submission in round one. And not round two or three. Please. <laughs> Dude, that, that first one was mad, bro. 124 to one. Sorry, and yeah. Patterson just doesn't submit him in round two. He submits him in round one. Fucking enraging. Happens, it? Play these games. <laughs> uh, let's just go... So should we do the money line? Well, we know that you're using Dixon sub, so we can't now use Dixon no, sub. No, we got to. Yeah, exactly. We got to do the money line special now. Did we do Sherry yet? All right, we'll just do the money line special. So I guess we're putting Walker because we haven't yeah. put him yet. Yeah, Walker. We could do Baja. Baja. We could do Dixon again. I don't really mind him. Her. I mean. Yeah. Do you want to put in Allen? Have we used Allen that much? I don't think we've used I know we have Dixon in a bu uh, in a bunch, but that's fine. I like Allen, if you don't mind him. Yeah, I, like I mean, don't parlay. I don't yeah. love him, but fuck it. I like Hernandez. And just drawing him in at this point, right? Um, I don't yeah. mind. Uh, what's what's uh home home? Go down a little bit. Um, Sherry A. I don't even mind. I mean, I know we've been using him though. We used her once. I'd rather leave him off just for now. Wait, we used him only once? Yeah. Oh, then we can put him in. If we only used him one time, that's fine. Yeah, but I'm not I'd be, I'd be more him. worried about Hernandez, if anything. Oh, you just want to go with your most confident ones first. Well, right? I'm not confident on him that much. Okay. So we don't need him this second. No, you're right. What about Matt Samoa? How many times have we used him? We haven't. Not one time? Oh, we used Matt Samoa decision. Actually. Decision, right. Yeah, let's use him then. That's fine. What's this going to be? This isn't going to be great. We might have no, to use no, no. Let's see. I think, we, I, th I think this is the week we just go with our money line reads, brother. I'm feeling good about this one for whatever reason. We just got to hope Mor Morono is the parlay buster. Plus 748. Should we just leave that? That's pretty beautiful. Nobody else we're loving? I just want to know who we're exposed to. Hernandez. Exposed yeah, to Hernandez quite heavily. Yeah, quite a bit. That's what, I'm, that's what I want to see. Keep going. Can we uh, go back and look? We got Hernandez in that parlay. We got... Hernandez in that parlay and Hernandez KO1 in okay, that Okay, I would like to leave him out of the money line parlay if possible. Okay. Okay, that's cool. With me. We got, oh, we got Walker somewhere. Oh, shit, we did put Walker in that. I didn't realize. Just that. one time, though. Yeah. Oh, because we said we wasn't going to put him in the money line parlay then. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I mean, money line parlay is going to be kind of hard if that's how we're doing it this week, bro. We'll remove Hernandez like you want to. Maybe. Kind of wanted I think to we just, him. yeah. I don't know. I think we might be forced to just throw him in this week, bro, and just see if it hits. Yeah. We didn't really take too many risks this week, bro. No. So, I mean, no. like, we could go Hernandez. Shit. I mean, if he hits, it's good. If that was Are you want to take him out? That's the money line parlay. Because <laughs> removing Hernandez, that's fine, but uh, it's just going to be 465. That's not enough. Dude, we gave out a 30 to 1, bro. We should be able to do this again. Yeah, but it's just got to give, do what the card gives us, you know? I feel that, too. Alex saying, do either of you take... Of course. I take every single one of these bets. I take every single one of these bets, and I'm up a and, massive and, amount of and money. 
if you want, I'll, I'll uh, you could send me a fake DM, and I'll send you, <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you a fake bet slip. Bro, why, why? No way, James. Why would I not, bro? Why would I not take it? Dude. If we're, I'm up 60 60 percent ROI. Why would I not take these bets, brother? Do you know how many times I've been close to hitting the JV special? I literally want to go back and give you the ones and tell you exactly what happened in those fights. Yeah, and they're I'll, like, they're like ridiculous, fucking ridiculous fucking ones in there. Zalal ITD Dobson two three. And Dobson gets uh, fucking put at the end of round one. Come on, that's brother. Insane. That so was saying, insane. Does he take the JB? Why wouldn't you? Like, yeah, of course. <laughs> I take all of them. I take all of them. Bro, you'd be um, rich. You'd be fucking massively rich had the uh, Sam Patterson got a sub in round two. I'm already clean. I'm already clean. I got fifty units of profit. All right. Yeah. Um, well, sixty percent ROI. Dude, no, like two hundred bucks at plus one hundred twenty-four thousand. That's a fucking. Bro, I'm putting five hundred dollars. Like Seriously? someone can do the maths. I put five hundred dollars on each parlay, so I don't know how much that comes to, but that's a lot of money. Oh, five hundred? Then damn, you'd be up like half a mil off of that. Every special. On every single parlay. Yeah. So what's that? That's twenty five K, isn't it? I think. Yeah, I mean, dude, look, I could have almost hit a hundred twenty four to one. You're telling me I can't hit a twenty nine to one? Fuck out of here. Over twenty five thousand dollars profit, I'm at because we're at fifty units of profit, and I put and that's one unit flat stake, and I do five hundred dollar flat stake. So five hundred dollar flat stake at fifty units profit is uh, twenty five k, bro. Yeah, fucking thirty to one, fucking help big time. <laughs> yeah, solid. Um, what are we at here, man? We're at uh, this money line parlay. Hit on the weird. Uh, JB Special is gonna hit on UFC three hundred. So. I and this like week, we add one more to the money line pilot. We took out Hernandez, which is cool. We can take him out. Yeah, let's say I didn't like one of these like lower, um, like uh, you know, do it. Hana what Hernandez gonna lose? Hernandez gonna lose, right? Yeah, that's how I feel too, right? Um, that's how I feel too. Yeah, I think we leave Hernandez and we got to take what this week gives us, and that's yeah, it. You're right. That's free, yeah. We're just gonna do it. Just gotta okay. throw him on there, yeah. I don't blame you. All right, fuck it, man. Whatever. Plus, what was it, 748? Perfect. Right, if we lose, we lose, whatever. We're, nah, I mean, nah, we, can nah. only, we can only do what we do. Like, we can't we can't control them in there. I think he's a money line side. I think he's going to win. I think he's going to knock him out. All right. If we lose, we lose, whatever. Yeah, it's a stacked play. You know, he gets the decision. He don't get the KO. Or he gets the KO, too. He does, you know, we're, we're, we hope he gets the KO one. That's what our, like, goal is. If he wins yeah. the decision, you cover that as well. Oh, shout out my man Kiwi. Appreciate you, bro. Cheer, brother. Cheer. Cheer, my bro. Man, I, I like how we did it this week, man. We're not going like crazy, crazy, you know? True. Seven leg on the seven to one on the seven leg parlay. Yeah, we need that. Six legger. Oh, Six. bro, we're back. Yeah, but seven parlay seven. Seven to one on parlay seven. Maybe we just leave parlay five, bro. Maybe we just leave it. Leave that, yeah. What the fake parlay? How much is it? Plus four or something? Yeah, for something, for something. Minus one fifty. Plus one twenty five. And minus one seventy. Oh wow. Plus four nine six, we just leave it. It's like five to one, bro. Yeah. Let's say we get hit. Alright, let's just do the math real quick on these. For a second, let's see if we can hit, you know, three of these parlays, right? We hit seven to one. We, hit, hit, we uh, hit two of the fours, and then we're in profit. We just hit two in the fours. We're going to hit more than that, brother. Uh, yeah, I'm is, saying, like, at minimum if we do that. Let, let me read them off real quick uh, off the top. So we got parlay one, a.k.a. the only fans fade parlay, a.k.a. the Dixon Cider special my boy Trevor Peek at plus 142, Jermaine Duran to me, and uh, Morgan Cherrier, the OnlyFans feed, and Chepe Mariscal has a adult video, so double down on that. Parlay number two, we got Melissa Dixon with the most random, uh, you know, chalk with the random plus money, so I don't know why I came up with it. Hernandez KO1 is going to give you plus 463, a little extra juice on the Dixon. Um, you know, Dixon, yeah. Dixon. 
We got a bunch of Dixons today. Parlay 3, my man Lucrative MMA cooked up a banger. Bahamandas 2-3, the classic submission play. And you know it's my favorite number, 420. We got Alexander Hernandez, the, um, the, what's his name? The Great Ape. The Great, we got the Great Ape on this card and the Great White. Coincidence? I don't think so. And the guy, Walter Walker, he is in parlay number three. He is our guy this weekend. And that's going to give you plus 1027. We got parlay number four. JB is coming up with Allen ITD. I think he gets the job done this week. And I think he gets the submission in round two. Victor Hugo and Matsumoto goes the distance. Minus 215. A little juice. But that's going to get your parlay all the way up to 412 on the dot. Um, parlay number five, a.k.a. to be determined fake parlay. But we determined it. But we're, no, 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 no. Don't take out the TBD. Right? We got to leave the TBD. We got to leave the TBD because it's still to be determined. It's going to be determined that we win this money this weekend. And Dan the Determined is going to lose a decision. And all the Determined crybabies are going to be sitting there. So, <laughs> parlay number six is the JB special. We got Hugo KO Dixon sub. Plus twenty nine hundred. Sheesh. That's a huge one, and only two <laughs> legs. I like those two leggers. You don't have to sweat too much. Hell yeah, bro. Hell yeah. That's why I'm keeping it at the JB special is gonna maybe for UFC three hundred. We do three legs. Three hundred legs. Yes, three hundred legs. The triple centipede, and then we got AKA Moneyline special. Walter Walker, Bahamandes, Alexander Hernandez, Melissa Dixon. Brandon Allen, and Marshall Mottel. That's your parlays this weekend, guys. Plus 748. I wish you guys luck. Bang. Parlay Madness episode 12 has finished. Appreciate everyone as always. Not much more to say, boys, but we do this shit every week, man. I've been betting on sports for about 15 years. I've been betting on MMA for about 9, 10 years. And I've been profitable for about five, six years. So the honorable mention parlay has to be written down, but that's not that's not a this is not a parlay. But it anyway, <laughs> my, my thing stopped working completely now. So um go get yeah. that rest, my man. Sound like you just woke up out of a coma. I'm tired, bro. Yeah, man. Sleep is important, huge part of the process, bro. So definitely get it yeah. done. But that's it, man. Not <sighs> All my bets will be released later today for anyone wondering. I know a few people were commenting earlier. Um, I'm going to finalize all of the Elite Zone stuff right now as I come off this podcast. And that's it, man. The, the cruise continues. We're up 52 units of profit this year. This show is up 50 units of profit this year. And I don't know what the Jews record is, but, you know, the Jews been doing his thing. And next week is UFC 300, which is going to be one of the biggest weeks of my life. I think I'm going to have some massive, massive bets. I think I'm going to also not only have massive bets, but have lots of bets, you know, so it's going to be a combination, which is uh, sometimes dangerous, but you got to put your money on the line when you believe you have an edge. And I believe next week is going to be a huge edge. The Parlay Madness show next week is going to be crazy. Um, my bets in general are going to be crazy. My content in general is going to be crazy, but the Parlay Madness show is going to be even crazier. And uh, maybe we can get that one out like a day earlier or something mm. just so it can marinate. And that's it, boys. Not much more to say. We're going to keep crushing it. And uh, yeah, uh, JB, anything to say before we... I'll, I'll let you close the show out, bro. Cooking up some fucking sick shit for UFC 300. I'm in the fucking lab. I'm in a dark fucking place. It's going to be some fucking plus money props on this card, guys. And um, it's giving me UFC 297 vibes. So for all the OGs, you know what the fuck I mean by that. All right. And that's it. Take, take care, boys. We'll see Bang. you next week. Good luck this weekend. Bomb. <laughs>